and we are live. What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. We are back with, I believe it's episode three, part three of our V0.2 build. Um, this is the Cyborg kit. Uh, last week, we I had a short stream last week, so I had family in town visiting uh, Baby Jack, and um, but we did get the entire rest of the base frame assembly done, which is awesome because it's sort of the, it's in my opinion, one of the more tedious parts of this entire build, just because they're really small extrusions. You have to make sure you preload everything correctly. And <clears throat> I'm also just very anal about the, um, about any wobble in the frame. So I did spend a little bit of time after last week's stream, just sort of uh, loosening and tightening things a bit more to get the as little wobble as possible. And there's still like a microscopic amount, but it, this it has to be night and day better than any of the V zeros I've built previously. So I'm quite happy with uh, currently where it's at. So how's everybody doing today? Who's all here? I know that some people are taking off. Steve is heading out to uh, Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. I know Luke's taking off. I think he said tomorrow. Uh, let's see. We've got Lisa here. DJ's here. CNC. Dom's here. Barnyard. Jose. David. Del Mar. I think I just said that. I was saying it twice. What's going on? Um, so yeah, for anybody that didn't see, um, Alan Mandic from Mandic really did his video on the Cyborg V0.2, uh, and he definitely had some critiques, some definite pluses um, from his or improvements from his first experience with the 0 0.1, which is great. Um, it seemed like his primary issue was with the printed parts. He had quite a few in his video that um, either split or uh, he showed one that had some pretty serious warping. Um, I will say that I haven't seen, um, like I saw that I think one of his front pieces of the bed was one that um, one that had a split in it. I'm looking at mine like mine looks great. Um, the only thing I'm seeing with the black parts um, is that on some of the top layers, let's go to the side really quick here. <clears throat> on some of the side, so top layer, like on this one, there's some under extrusion. Um, I can see that on the edges, uh, there's tiny gaps around the edges and there's also gaps between the lines uh, a bit. So hopefully these were printed with the four or five uh, top shells so um, there's still you know a fair bit of strength in these parts but that's the main oh, come on why aren't we focusing there we go that's the main thing that I'm seeing um, I looked at so right now I took a look at let me check this again so this is a pretty big part um, this is the base um, for the um, power cable and the switch inlet and um, it's flat like there's no I don't have any warping issues uh, I don't like that I also take a took a look at the um, AB motor mounts the bases of mine they're all flat so I haven't seen um, uh, cats now watching the stream from the enclosure <laughs> I saw your post on Twitter this morning um, of your cat laying on top of the enclosure uh, for the mercury <laughs> um, what's going on techie uh, hey Matthew, uh, who's, all, who's all here? I missed him. Uh, Chris is here. Tor, uh, oh yeah, Tor already said hi too. Um, Ten's in the house, what's going on? Yeah, so I'm not seeing any of the warping at least so far. I mean, I haven't gone through all the parts. Um, if there's anything, I mean, it's again, it, it's, it's super, super minimal at best. Like, I mean, I would argue that even some of the parts I printed on my own might have had a hair, 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 hair bits of bits of it yeah the only thing I'm really seeing again is that on some of these top layers uh, and it might be the case on the red printed parts as well just the black seems to show it a bit better um, it appears to be a slight bit of under extrusion but uh, again nothing like parts that appear to be splitting away from each other like splintering I think is what I usually call it um, or anything like that so we'll see that was definitely the main issue I think with um, with his, so I don't know if it was just a freak thing where his batch of printed parts, um, there was a draft or, or what the deal is, uh, but knock on wood that hasn't been the case with these so far. And we'll kind of see as, as things continue, continue with this. Um, let's see, Kurt says, I finally got my extrusions for my V0.1, uh, dot eight, nine. Nice. Uh, build self-source, although most of the parts we got from Cyborg, except for the Kirigami bed from Fabrico. Nice. Hey, Nuno's in the house. Uh, you don't need to print the foreign design part scaled up. Hey, Steve's back. I thought you left, Steve. Uh, what's going on, Danny? Dennis is here. Aaron's here. What's going on? 
Uh, right. So, uh, another exciting news. I did talk to Fabrico this last week and he let me know that the 2.4 kit that we're going to be building is officially at his facility. Uh, I anticipate that he's going to be busy. I think he's going to Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Fest. I know that Zero G, um, I know Dutch Dude's going. I know Scott is going at Edge of 3D. Uh, I don't know if they're, if they're going to be at Fabrico's booth or not, but I think Fabrico's probably going. Um, almost positive but don't quote me on it so i'm gonna wait uh, also we've probably got a, uh, we've got a couple more weeks on building the v0.2 so i'm not in a huge rush but it is exciting to know it is at least here so uh that will be awesome uh raheem's saying if anyone has issues with the printed parts hit me up on discord he will get you covered awesome thank you very much for that uh, early versions use bad abs filament they have since changed the filament and have vastly improved also good to hear okay steve's taking off everyone say bye steve have a safe safe drive steve is driving all the way from California to Colorado, so he's got quite the mission on his hands. What's up, TT? Well, it'll be fun to see all the uh, Rocky Mountain Rep 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 YouTube content. I agree. I'm going to be this year living through everybody else's Twitter posts and through uh, YouTube. I'm super excited to see. For anyone that didn't see, uh, Voron posted a little bit of a teaser this morning. I think it's on their official YouTube channel. Let me see here. Um, do, do, do. Show you guys this here and then we'll get going here. So I do want to make some good progress today. Yeah, so this was released. Um, it's, oh snap. Okay, so I didn't see this part of it. I only saw, the video I saw was it was dark uh, that they posted on Twitter. So I didn't see this. Let me check really quick here. I'm almost positive that on Twitter, um, I thought, was it saying, who, who posted it on Twitter this morning? Um, Okay, so this is what I, maybe I did see it then. I thought that all I saw was a darker image of it. Um, so this looks crazy. I I, um, I don't even know. I mean, it looks like, it looks like a, a heater block right here uh, with two, maybe volcano. I see vertical looking uh, heat blocks, two heater cartridges, some sort of wild looking extruder setup maybe. Uh, so yeah, I'm super excited, especially because um, I'm building a 2.4 and, uh, not that I plan on building a dual setup. I plan on doing a single setup, but I'm still excited that they're doing maybe some kind of mods for it. So, uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, not released, refreshed. Uh, what did I say, Delmar? That was incorrect. The, uh, the massive, oh, it's the two. Oh, so there's a thing called the 2.4. Okay. So maybe I just don't know what this is. The uh, V24 is the OG Voron. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Interesting. Okay. Um, Lisa says uh, Rocky Mountain Rapper Festival uninvited DTP. I actually think that isn't wise if he causes issues and kick him out. Yeah, the only thing, so I also don't think that people should be banned because of their online opinion. Although I do know that some of the things he's posted are not threats, but like really offensive. Um, and also I know that Prusa is one of the biggest sponsors of the event. So I can see where like, if they were like, yeah, we don't want him here, the, the event would kind of, I mean, maybe they still have the ultimate authority, but if Prusa is dumping a bunch of dollars into helping uh, with the rent for the place because i think i don't do tickets cost i don't think usually the um rep prep fest cost i know murph doesn't uh but i could see why it does, still doesn't necessarily mean i think it's right uh but i understand i guess to an extent uh but it's certainly not 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 cool um yeah I, I've, i'm gonna torn about it i i see both sides of it because i think that again online disagreements are online disagreements but I do know that I've seen some things over the last couple of years where I'm like, ah, it's pretty offensive and like not, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, it is a private event. Ultimately they can do um, what they want regardless of, you know, what we think, I suppose. But yeah, I don't know. Um, check, check live streams. Oh, live streams in Discord. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. We will get we will get to building quickly once I once I uh... <laughs> Luke Luke was talking about how many times they can make me squirrel. Um... Oh, sick! 
Okay. Yeah. V2 for deployed and upgraded. What a crazy looking thing. Uh, it looks like it's got the, I can't tell if these are belts in the corners, if it's four belt driven as well, but certainly a different type of extrusion uh, all across the board. That's cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd never heard of that before. That, I guess that makes sense as to why it says 2.4, not 2.4. <clears throat> all right, so yeah, let's get building. Um, I have pulled out all the parts that I think we'll need for today in an attempt to um, get us off on a good foot, on a good leg, I think that's the saying. <laughs> I know all of these like like sayings, but I know them wrong. I, I'm the same way with lyrics and songs. Aaron's, Aaron, I'll... There's like a song that I'll have said for years and Aaron will hear me one time like, what did you just say? And I'll repeat it and then look up the lyrics some way off. So anyways, um, yeah, last time we got done with the uh, frame. So that's where we're at. We are starting with the AB drives today. So um, let's see um, if we can knock out all the heat inserts at once. I think that's ideally what I would like to do. So let me start by getting some of these. <clears throat> oh, lead screws. Okay, I couldn't see that. Um, Let's see if I can open this bigger. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can see that now. Um, with their lead screws. So still linear rails, but it looks like maybe four, four lead screw driven. Bed still on the bottom, like the 2.4. <clears throat> Super cool. I, I didn't know this was a thing. All right. Uh, okay, so let's grab. Again, if I can get this part out. I think Nero said something like a 600 by 600. Wait, that's what the size of it is or what they're building? Uh, 24 inch build space is 600. Oh. Why is this not coming out? What am I doing wrong? Oh, that's because I'm being a goofball. I need to slide this off. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's put this off to the side and try to do all the heat inserts so that way we're not bouncing back and forth. I think that'll kind of help with expediting <clears throat> this portion of it. So we need inserts in both of these parts. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. We also need inserts in, looks like these parts. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Nothing there. Uh, remind me too today when I install the little set screws on the motors that we use the Loctite. Um, I'll actually pull it out so that way I don't forget. Loctite here. <clears throat> okay, that's it for this portion of it. Heat inserts there, heat inserts there. I guess that's all right. Well, we might be doing heat inserts a couple times, but let's at least do the AB portion of it. So we need to start off by, looks like three on the bottom and two of them go below the surface and one of them goes right to the surface. So, um, so left and right. One second. I want to make sure I'm looking at this right. All right. Left and right. Yes. Below the surface. Okay. Hey, what's up G funny? Are you trying to go, um, is your goal to go to one of the RepRap Fest this year or no? Next year, I'm absolutely going to at least one that I will, that I can guarantee. But yeah, this year with the little man and everything going on, I just, I want to be here as much as I possibly can. Hey, Scott's in the house. When are you taking off for, uh, when are you taking off, Scott? Hey, booty. Hey, Thomas is here. What's going on? Long time no see, man. Okay, let's turn on our iron. Let's get out our heat inserts, which are right here. That's weird, it didn't give you a notification, Matt. Maybe it's just delayed. We'll, we'll do a manual then. Thank you very much for six months. I don't know what's going on with the... Uh, do a little confetti and we'll do a clap for that. Thank you for six months. Um, oh, I put it on nozzle camera, which isn't a thing. Uh, let's see, turn that off. That was from when we did the live stream with the um, 3DO nozzle cam. 
Uh, not this time work is too crazy. Yeah, I kind of figured as much. <clears throat> How things been? I actually saw, I saw that you posted uh, the silicone sock for the Mark IV. I did pre-order one. I will, <laughs> I would love, I would love a sock for the Mark IV. I thought, it, I thought that they were shipping with them, but maybe I must have seen that wrong. Oh, I got seven more print. Oh my gosh. Uh, what I, actually, what I was just talking about you and Dutch. Are you guys, um, is Fabrico having a booth there? Is that what you guys are doing? Let me actually also get this in focus and turn off auto. Um, is Fabrico doing a booth there? I know that you guys are going, but I wasn't sure if you guys were going sort of independently or um, if you guys were going to be out of Fabrico's booth like, uh, like last year. All right. All right, I think that's hopefully below the surface enough. I The issue is, is like, so the pockets are deeper because it's intended to go below the surface, but at the same time, these brass inserts will melt the plastic. Um, and so there's been, I've definitely, I think it was on the first V0 build. Also, I had, I had incorrect brass inserts on my first build where the outer diameter instead of five mil was 5.5, I think. Um, and the brass inserts like went beyond the printed part. Like they started coming out the other side. I'm like, yeah, that's not good. Hey, Tunky's in the house. Uh, giant Fabrica booth, sick. All right, I figured as much. I just wasn't sure. John, what's going on? Kenneth, hello. Uh, you don't like this ChatGPT edition to Bing. It's rather annoying when you scroll to the top. <sighs> Man, I haven't used Bing um, ever. <laughs> other than if it came like pre-installed in Edge browser, I need to switch over. Um, do you normally use uh, Bing CNC or is there a reason you're just, you're kind of playing around with it? I mean, I know some people must use it. It exists, but I just, I've been on Google for so long. Yeah, I don't want to go further than that. All right, and then the middle one needs to just go flush. Largest booth at the event, oh my gosh. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of coverage. I'm sure Nero's going to get footage. I'm sure Joel's going to get footage. Um, but I am, I'm super excited. Uh, if any, I'm sure that hopefully uh, Hector will take some photos or videos of it as well. All right, so this one I'm going to keep an eye on because we just want this one right below the surface. Yeah. a bit more there we go that's fine okay so we got three in there let's see what else we need i'm gonna do all of the ab ones so three on the bottom there that's fine okay and then we need one here uh which is going to be on this guy on the bottom and this one's just flush i take it um let's make sure there's nothing else Doesn't look like it. Okay. Uh, I'll get you plenty. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to be, uh, I might not be there physically, but in spirit, I will be there all weekend. <laughs> I will be all over, uh, all over. Uh, any news on the VZ bot? No. Um, I'll share a little bit more. All that I know is that uh, me and Steve have made a pact to get VZ bots. Um, and build them in some form of collaborative stream, which I'm super excited for. Uh, we don't want the 330, we want the 235, and the game plan is that we're going to be getting them from Mellow, uh, I, and that's all I know. I, have no, I don't have any information. I haven't talked to Mellow. Um, I think Steve reached out, um, but I don't know. I don't have like an ETA as far as when they're even gonna be available, so I don't wanna say anything else beyond that other than it'll be 235 Mellow kits, and it'll be a collaborative uh, build series stream which I have no idea how it's gonna work. Uh, and I anticipate two chats and me and squirrel distractions that it's, it's, it's gonna be a wild, wild build series. Um, but I'm super excited. Uh, Steve's rad and I, I couldn't be more hyped to 
uh, build a VZ bot <laughs> with Steve. It's gonna be a ton of fun. But yeah, it's the only info I've really got right now. Okay, so uh, let's do the exact same thing for the other side. That way we can make some good progress before we start doing more inserts. So that was that side. The other side, we're doing the exact same thing. So we'll grab Hugh, the other two go below the surface and the center goes flush. Um, oh, excuse me, uh, I'm getting so excited to go to Rock and Roll Festival and check out all the cool booths and new toys. The question is how much I can ship stuff in my suitcase. Yeah, I, you're gonna need to bring a uh, check a bag um, and not have it empty on the way out there so that way you can fill it with things. There's always a bunch of cool stuff and like, I mean, not everyone sells stuff. I mean, you saw it at Murph, but there's there's always definitely some like filament sales and uh, just different sales going on. Uh, we do CPAP on the VZ. Um, I would like to, I, I don't know what the kit comes with. I don't, I, something tells me that might not be a standard, um, but it's, I've always been interested in checking out the CPAP mods and um, if it is sort of designed for it, then yeah, I would like to. Um, but yeah, I think eventually, I, I think starting off, we would probably build it stock, I anticipate, but uh, because this is like a, you know, a joint thing between me and Steve, I, I, I want to see his opinion on it too before I say definitively one way or another. But yeah, I was really excited when I talked to Steve and he was totally on board with it. All right, so the outer two again below the surface, kind of just pushing them until they stop. Um, with applying a little bit of force, but not a ton of force. Probably fine. I'd rather go, yeah, I think I might've melted a little bit too much on there. So I'm gonna have to clear out the pocket a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, what's the documentation like for the build? Is it anything like the Voron docs? I, I haven't even looked. Um, I, I did ask, um, I don't remember what, one second. Uh, so a couple things. One, I did ask, Vez had a live stream um, probably a couple months ago now, and he was showing off some new goodies that he had just gotten in from Mello. And at that point I'd mentioned that, hey, I really want to build um, a VZBot. And so I hopped into the um, uh, VZBot Discord and I did ask, uh, I think, what the if there was instructions or if it was just CAD, and um, someone had said, no, there's step-by-step -step instructions. So I haven't looked at them, and I also don't know because it's the 235, I'm not sure how many differences there are, um, if it's just literally the, the extrusion sizes or if there's quite a bit of differences uh, as far as like maybe the 235 requires following CAD while the 330 has step-by-step. -step. I don't entirely know, um, but when I asked at least at that time, it sounded like there was a step, step by step of sorts. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen it firsthand. I know that there's a couple of people here, um, at least two viewers, uh, fairly regular viewers that have a VZ bot. Like I know that um, Polar Ted has one, and then um, it's Edgy or CB. So, uh, well, I know there's somebody else that has a VZ. Uh, maybe they might be able to speak on it a little bit more. Um, how will this co-build, hey turtle, uh, how will this co-build work? Uh, that is a great question. Uh, set it back into the bag of foam, it seals with a lot of air. Everything's gonna be nice, I'm driving. sorry, I'm, I, I squirreled out because I missed some. Um, I don't, I don't know, turtle. <laughs> I don't know, I'm imagining some sort of, maybe I'll have to pay for like StreamYard because I know it does a better job of having like split views. Um, but I don't know whether, like, I would imagine we'd probably be streaming to both channels and I don't know how that would work with chat. I don't, I don't know how, I have no idea. <laughs> Once we have like, um, more info as far as like when we're going to be getting, I'm going to turn this off before I burn myself. Um, when I have more info as far as when the kits will be available, when we're going to be getting them, that's when I'll probably do a deep dive into, okay, how are we going to do this now? <laughs> but yeah, as of right now, I have zero clue. Um, and exciting news and also because Turtle and Scott are here. Uh, this Saturday, which is kind of funny because um, a lot of people will be gone at Rep Rep Fest, but uh, this Saturday my video on the Mercury 1.1 build goes live and I'm really excited about that. Uh, the Mercury 1.1 and the Hydra and just the whole experience of it all. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Giorgio's, hi everyone, I'm planning on building my first printer. I can't decide if I should go with Cyborg 2.4, a Trudon 2.4, or Prusa Mark IV. I'd like to have the option to go with different filaments. Um, they will all let you print with different filaments. 
Uh, I did pre-order a Mark IV just because I'm curious about the extruder. I will say that the Mark IV, from what I'm seeing right now, seems like hardware is finished, but firmware is certainly not. Um, which is kind of disappointing. Um, the Cyborg 2.4, I don't have any experience with, but um, Nice, who I don't think is in chat today, uh, he's been building one in the um, Modbot Army Discord that's linked in the description. You can see his whole build, um, like build log that he's been putting together. And it seems like it's been a really positive experience. Like there was a couple of things I saw, he said there was a defective uh, inductive probe, but which ended up not being inductive. It just was wired differently or set differently. Um, and I think there was one other issue that was also resolved. Um, so pretty minimal. And I think, again, unless things change, he said for the, for the price point, it's been a very positive experience. Um, I don't know much about the Trudon other than it's like a 2.4 that's pre-built, I believe. Um, I don't, maybe someone else can speak on it a little bit more. Uh, have you put camp on your ender with the clicky? I have not. Um, I have the ender with the clicky right here, um, but I haven't, no. Uh, are you going to do the Mark IV build live? I will. Yeah, I will do the build live. Yep, yep. Uh, Midlife Chaos, what's going on? I'm loving my symbol Mark IV. It prints like a dream with no issue so far. Yeah, it's weird. I've seen both sides of it. Like some people having great experiences and a few others having awful experiences. The main things I've seen are frustration over no input shaper and frustration over no pressure advance, I believe, uh, as well as frustration over them removing crash detection. Um, Crash detection seems odd that they would have gotten rid of it. And I would think that with the drivers, they're the same drivers. So I don't see why they couldn't add that back. Um, the input shaping not being released in the fine print, it seems like it did say that it was not going to be out right away, but they certainly hyped it up in the marketing. So I can see why people are frustrated with that. Um, I think it was not a lie, but it was certainly slightly deceptive. <laughs> I, I, I think that's fair to say. Um, and the other thing is I've seen some issues with the nozzle. Seems like it's marking up the bed on some people's printers, um, but it, I don't know. I, I don't see how that's possible on a powder coated bed. So I don't know if these are um, users that are using like soft um, PEI sheets because those are, those are typically more fragile than powder coated. Um, so I don't really know, but mostly positive is what I've seen. And the, I think that most of the things will get resolved, but um, I do think that it seems like the firmware could have used a little bit more time in the oven and then it was sort of pushed out a bit quicker than maybe it should have been. But I don't know. I mean, not that I want to hold them to the same standards as some of the companies not doing the right things, but it's sort of the way things have been. And not that like we should accept that and Prish has always been really known to not do things that way, but I don't know, it sort of is what it is. The machine's at least fully functional and seems to be working uh, well for, again, like Luke's having a great time with it. I just think that um, at least it didn't release a non-polished product with the input shaping. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, I saw Uncle Jesse sent his back. It sounds like afterwards the issue with Uncle Jesse's was quite simple. I'm not entirely sure, well, but a lot of people seem to notice that the hot end and the, um, so the heat sink and the layer cooling fan were swapped where they were plugged into the board. Um, I don't know if that explains what's going on with some of his weird line stuff, uh, layer line stuff, but that seems to have been a big part of his issues. Uh, and I saw multiple people pointing that out, which sucks. Um, I'm looking forward to the MMU3. Yeah, MMU3 seems really interesting. Something that's been in development over the past few years, some of these issues, even if minor, seem rather perplexing. I agree. I agree. If it's been in development as long as they claim it's been in development, it seems odd to me. I, I, I completely agree with that. Yeah, I'm not giving them a pass. I don't think it's cool either. Uh, but at the same time, I will say, like, when I got my bamboo, things weren't fully set on it. When I, like, it's like, I don't think it's cool, but I also can't be like, oh, they're so bad when it's just the way everyone's been doing things. So, like everyone's equally guilty of some, some more than others, absolutely. Uh, and at least I feel like Prusa is gonna be good for it in terms of finally, you know, at some point releasing it while others have said things and then been like, ah, we're never doing it now. Um, but yeah, it would have been cool if they had launched with it, so. Okay, let's do some assembly. So. All right, let me grab, we don't need the printer right now. Let's put you back here so we got some space to work with. Everybody been reports day and night since I got them and ordered before they even published the release vids. No issues except for the uh, minimal FS1. FS1, 
Wait, what is that first one? Firmware? Fir firmware setting? How do about the XL warping parts on high fill plates? Yeah, I don't know about the XL. I canceled my XL order uh, and put my $200 towards the Mark IV. I don't think I really necessarily want the XL, at least for the foreseeable future. I think there's a long ways for it to go from where it's at to where all the tool heads are ready to work seamlessly together. So I just decided I, I don't think it's it's worth it right now. Um, I'm more interested in seeing what the next shooter is capable of. All right. A, a... All right, so we need to take this part that says A, and we need to take this part that also says A, and it looks like the A's need to go on the same side as each other. So A here, A here, let's go through there like that. Um, and it's sad that nowadays we're getting unpolished products, missing features. I agree. I mean, I'm playing around with the, um, so, I'm playing around with the Kitty um, X Max. This is the Max. Yes, I keep mixing up Max and Plus. Um, and I feel the same way. Like a lot of the hardware in here, I'm like, yeah, it's not bad hardware. It's Core XY, it's Direct Drive, it's all metal hot in, it's yada yada. But then like you look at the um, the firmware and it's just like, what? Uh, what is all this? And then you look at the slicer and it's like, okay, and there's been, you know, there's already been some updates. Like there was an issue with the screen. They sent an update. Um, you know, and it wasn't my understanding. It wasn't my understanding that I was beta testing. Like this is supposed to be full retail. Um, and yeah, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems to be the way that a lot of, a lot of things have been, um, Maybe it's always been this way and I'm just realizing it more or people are making more of a statement about it. I don't really know, but it feels like, man, it's been this way for quite a while now. Like, I feel like if I look at my channel and I look at a lot of my complaints on a lot of the printers, it's that like, this is good, but this isn't finished. I mean, it's the same thing with the Sovol SP06, or yeah, SP06 Plus. Um, it was the same thing with the Creality uh, Hallett 1. It's, just, it's been this way for just a long time, so I don't know. <clears throat> okay, I am going to attempt to assemble something before I talk anymore. Uh, let's see, so we need M335s. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit for a sec here too. Uh, ba -do -ba -do. M335s, that's you. I'm gonna take out double of everything because I'm assuming since we're doing two of these, we will be needing two of everything. I, I know somebody else, uh, Thomas, that got the Mark IV at launch um, and has been printing pretty much nonstop with it, like Prusa Caster and a bunch of other stuff, and it's been nothing but positive. So I, I do know that there's a lot of people out there that are also quite happy. Uh, let's see, F623RS. Oh, what the heck? Uh, so we need one, two, three, four, five, six. So 12 total right now. I think the attitudes are changing and this trend will go away. We need the companies to be accountable, all of them. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like a lot of it is, um, it's race mentality. Like as far as they're all in a race and like i get it to an extent because that's the way i guess most things are right like video game consoles there's sony and xbox always kind of push out at the roughly same time because each generation it's like there's that first to market um i think i got a beard beard hair in my mouth <laughs> um there's like first you know first to market that gets captures a lot of those initial sales oh no did i lose a bearing uh no give me one sec i feel like there was two bearings here tied together and i'm only finding i guess i should be able to check how many there was 24 so let's just do a count instead <clears throat> six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty wait 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 <laughs> Am I, am I, can I not count? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20. Yeah, I did lose one. Crap. All right. I doubt there's spares on those bearings as well. Um, I never understand how from such a short distance. Ah, oh, found it. All right. Okay. Let's not do that again. One second. Let me get the bearings flat so that way they can't roll. Okay. I was indecisive about buying the cyber care for watching your first live. I was completely sold. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, even like, so if you watched Alan's video this morning, um, I like, don't get me wrong. I think that the printed parts, like not acceptable, that needs to get resolved. Um, but even that aside and the other things, I still think it's an incredible value. It's a $200 difference, right? And then if you add the printed parts, in, P in ABS alone, it's like $40 in material, but then you add the labor associated with it, it's at least $80 in my mind, at least, of printed parts. Um, so, first marketing is first to fix the plethora of bugs for being fast. Yeah, it's true. Hey, Dutch. Yeah, D hey, Dutch is who I was actually, Dutch is the person I was, like, talking about. They got the Mark IV at launch and has been printing a ton with it, um, like the Prusa Caster. Uh, there's also, there are also review vids of the Cyber Rare 2 kit by Greg Fair Corner and Manic Really. Yep. Uh, do you think the V02 are worth the price of the printer when you can get something larger at the same price or just for you like to build and tinker? Um, I think it's a beast of a printer. Um, I, what would be something comparable? Like, like I'm talking uh, a Core XY, like so fast, right? You know, Core XY, fully enclosed direct drive, so capable of printing with ABS. I don't know of much, like there's the Rook, but the Rook is not fully enclosed, although I know that there's now the Rook, I think Evolution's fully enclosed, but like what what is there that's fully enclosed that's Core XY? Because um, I know there's other stuff, right? Like you can get like a KP3S, upgrade the heat break, enclose the thing for probably 300 bucks maybe. Um, and you know, that's cheaper. But for, for a Core XY with, you know, Clipper and all that, I just don't know what other route there is really. Uh, hey Stuart. But yeah, I certainly think that regardless that the V0.2 is for someone that wants to um, definitely tinker and it can it can be a workhorse though. Like I do think it can be a workhorse, but I think in general, if you're building a Voron, you have to have at least some element of enjoyment in tinkering or in um, like the 3D printing as a hobby. But the rat, rat rig and VZ are much more expensive than, um, than a V0. Especially if we're talking like, again, this is 500 bucks. So let's just say $500 versus the VZ. I don't think you can build one, even the smaller ones under a grand. Uh, and the rat rig would be the V Minion, which is a bigger bed, uh, but the V Minion's also more expensive if I'm not mistaken. I think it's at least six to $700. Um, okay, so we need printed spacers. Oh crap, that's one thing I didn't get out. Um, All right, spacers, it says they're all the same. Uh, and then we need M3 shims. Do, 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 M3 shims. Okay. So we are going. Uh, 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 like this. Uh, it doesn't need to be quirk spine. and you could just get a tent enclosure if you need ABS. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> yeah, if it doesn't, if you don't care about necessarily having core XY, then yeah, there's absolutely cheaper options. I mean, the get a Sobel SV06, throw it in a tent, bam, that's, I mean, you can get some of the like, n like low cost tents from Creality or on AliExpress for, I would imagine like 50 bucks or less. And then the printer itself is 220. So you're talking 300 bucks and you have a bigger, uh, you know, bigger bed, bigger print area. So there has to be, um, there has to be, Pandora's box is the way. <laughs> yeah, there, there has to be some um, of that enjoyment of the build. And um, I, I mean, again, I think that the V0 is gonna perform substantially better when you get it dialed in. Uh, and maybe you recoup some cost and reliability long-term. I don't know, uh, you know, so. Uh, v Mini wasn't that expensive. I think it was 700. Um, I think the price may have gone down a bit. Let me see. Uh, uh, uh. 
So the full kit is not available. Uh, full kit is five ninety nine. So maybe was that? I thought it was more at first. I thought it was six ninety nine at first. So yeah, five ninety nine. I mean, I guess um, this would technically be a bit of a better value. You've definitely got a bigger build volume. It's you still have to enclose it though. Hey, thanks, babe. Happy stream day. Half inch foam board. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, uh, let's do this. So both screws are going in from top down. Maybe. I hear baby jack. I think the easiest way to do this part was to have these at like an angle off the side like that. Um, okay, so I don't actually remember what the easiest way for this portion was. I'm just gonna hold them kind of like this to keep the threads from being able to pull out. So let's get let's get some of these shims out. Oh, I hate it. Yeah, you said that you hated it. I I really enjoyed enjoyed it. I enjoyed the build up until the electronics. That's when I felt like, man, this could have used some better design or like a little bit more thought to it. Um, but the actual mechanical assembly, I, I really enjoyed. I liked the instructions. I it was fun to me, and I, and I like the V Minion. I think it's a beast of a printer. I, I want to do some changes to mine. I want to add CAN bus. I want to um, potentially just do the electronics underneath it because I probably just won't enclose it. Um, and then I want to upgrade the tool head to the EVA 3.0. So maybe maybe we'll do that eventually. <clears throat> All right. So on the bottom side from the edge here, we need shim. Bearing. We need bearing again. Other direction. I think it's two shims, right? I did. I had a song for this at one point. This like I don't know if you guys remember like the last build, but I was like shim bearing bearing shim shim bearing bearing shim. Like I, I don't know. I, I had some way of maybe it was the switch wire where where I had a jingle and um it really it really helped me not screw up. I was pretty paranoid about this portion of it because I remember prior to building my first V0, seeing somebody in the Voron Discord having a ton of issues with their build. And after a lot of troubleshooting, they discovered that he forgot a shim. And so that slight bit of deviation was causing belt wear. Um, and so after I saw that, I was like, oh gosh, like shim's important. <laughs> so I was, I was triple, triple checking all of that. All right, and then just one shim on the outside, like this. Perfect. And then on the other side, we've got one of these printed printed spacers. Uh, your canvas guide was very helpful. Hey, I'm, I'm super happy to hear that. Thank you. I definitely, I plan on doing a bit more CAN bus stuff. Um, I know I've gotten at least requests to check out CAN bridge um, uh, when you don't need a U2C, just using the board that has Canbridge. So that's something I'd like to at least revisit or visit in the future. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. My goal was, uh, does Ratrix support CAN bus? Uh, what, what do you mean? Like what part of it do you mean support? Like, is there a config for it or is there? Hey, Llama's here. I gotta show off uh, Llama's, Llama's awesome uh, package, his, his uh, care package from last week. Let me, uh, let me finish this part with these these last couple of shims so I don't drop them. And then I will show that really quickly. All right, so we have shim, bearing, bearing. And there should be one final shim. <clears throat> like so. All right, let's see. Just verify one more time. So the edge one's got shim, bang, bang, shim, shim, bang, bang, shim. So shim, bang, bang, shim, shim, bang, 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 shim. Yep. And then spacer, shim, bang, bang, spa uh, shim. Perfect. Okay. So now that we've got that, we need to. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> one second. I need a third, a third arm or something. Um, okay, so this goes like this. 
this goes like this. Okay. So the interesting part will be if I can get this stacked. <clears throat> so I believe this is going to go like this. I did it, I did it, I did it. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh, hold, on. hold on. Yes! We did it. All right, one second. Let me see if there's anything I can do. Final stacking height, great. <clears throat> okay, so let's do these. Um, let's put in these two M330s really quickly here, which I think are the same the same length of what these screws are that I just used. No, these are 35s. So the 30s are here. Because this will help keep it all together and then I'll feel better. Uh, what is the dimensions for your light? You need a Modbot robot next to it. <laughs> I, um, I don't know what the dimensions are. I have to figure it out. <clears throat> yeah, if you didn't hear, um, I've been wanting to make a light for years for the backdrop and uh, either just didn't have the time or just came up with excuses and then I got the CNC machine in and was like cool I'll finally do it and it didn't happen and I saw that there was a one night I was like late night scrolling which is never safe and um, happened to see this custom LED uh, sign company through Amazon that was like hey we'll custom do a sign and have it delivered at like I don't know it's like at least two feet uh, so what did we say 600 millimeters long um, for like $90 delivered which was insane um, so I ended up ordering it. But yeah, I would love a robot one, even though I think that where I normally record is right here, so I think it would get covered. Originally, I just wanted to do the Modbot robot head. I think that might fit a little bit better than the full body. Okay, so let's see. So we have this like this. The M330s go front two. So this hole and this hole, so not the slotted holes. And I think that this should be into, yeah, these, these are going into the heat inserts. So once we've got this in place, I'll feel a little bit safer about setting it down for a moment. Nope. Okay, I feel like I did that maybe a little too tight. the clock back there. Yeah, I, I might. <clears throat> I was concerned initially with the clock that it was gonna make a ticking sound because I was like, that won't work because of um, audio for videos, but it doesn't, which makes me happy. My parents had a clock in their room um, that made a ticking sound every second. And uh, I, I, <laughs> I can't say I was a fan. It, it was very tough for me to sleep with that ticking sound. Okay, so I'm not over tightening these, but I am at least making sure they're snug. All right. This can still move, which is what we want. So this is going to be our tension. Okay, so I will set this down for a second. I still need to be careful. Um, should be fine like that, I think. Yeah, we can set it down like that. Okay, so super sweet. Um, last week, well, for anyone that's on Twitter, um, Tom Lama has been uh, showing for the last, maybe two weeks ago is when it started, uh, some uh, like job, not renderings, but like simulations of CNC jobs. And one of them uh, was of the Modbot Army uh, robot head. And I thought it was a coaster initially because I didn't have a scale. There was no sense of scale and just based off of the shape of it. And then I saw another one uh, of for uh, for Jackson for baby bot and they showed up last week I did damage one of the clock mechanisms on the back that was supposed to be here but it'll be here tomorrow that was on me um, some of the resin on one of them um, uh, went into the back of it and I should have drilled through I thought I could never mind doesn't matter but let's let's take a look these are awesome I did post them on Twitter but if you're not following me on there take a look at these these are so cool so we've got this one it says baby bot time. This one is, this one's already working. Um, 
The, also, he sent a handful of different uh, clock hands, and so Aaron picked out the fancy ones for Baby Jack, but yeah, it says Baby Bot Time, and he designed his own, like, it's the ModBot robot, but like a, <laughs> kind of like a derpy uh, baby version of it, which is pretty accurate for, um, for Baby Jack, so super, super awesome. Um, this is going up in his in his room. Uh, we don't have anything on the walls right now, so this will actually be the first thing that goes on the, on the wall. And then this is the other one, which is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so it's the ModBot Army logo. And this one is uh, CNC'd and then resin poured. And then I believe, I believe CNC'd again, or at least sanded smooth. And it's, it's gorgeous. Um, let me show if you can see this, the lighting. Uh, actually, let me turn on, let me turn on autofocus really quick here. Um, it's like a sparkly glitter. Uh, what am I doing? There we go. It's like a sparkly, oh, come on, let's see what it'll show in. Sparkly glitter green um, resin in there. And it, it is just absolutely awesome. Um, so yeah, this is incredible. But yeah, I goofed up um, on the back here. Um, the resin, some of it got into where the uh, mechanism for the clock goes. And for some reason, like, I, I don't know why I thought that I could just press through it, but it's it's very solid. Uh, and the clock, clock mechanism was very fragile. So I ordered the exact same um, uh, mechanism that you can see on this one. Uh, and so as soon as it comes in, I will be just drilling it, drilling that out uh, a hair bit more for the clock mechanism. And uh, I will be getting that set up. But yeah, it's uh, just sanded. Uh, okay, yeah, it looks, I was gonna say, it definitely looks super smooth. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're awesome looking. I mean, they're absolutely just beautiful. Um, and then also, as he sent as a bonus, uh, arguably the coolest coasters I have ever seen. And he said that these are all like leftovers or I think runoffs is what they're called um, from uh, some of the cutting boards and stuff that he does. And if I'm not mistaken, that looks like Purple Heart. Um, it, it's, these are, I mean, these are absolutely beautiful. I feel like I'm only gonna take these out for uh, like special occasions. like. These are like our anniversary coasters right here. I don't want these out for just regular, um, regular dinners or anything like that. So no, no, no jarred spaghetti meals. I say that because that's what we had for dinner last night. But yeah, seriously, thank you so much. These are incredible. Like such, so thoughtful. I had no idea that these were coming. I just saw on Twitter, he posted a few things. I was like, wait a minute, uh, what is that? So um, absolutely love them. Off cuts, not runoffs. <laughs> Off cuts sounds right, yes. Thank you, Tor. Um, but yeah, absolutely beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, again, just beyond, I showed, um, I, I wanted to wait until last week they got delivered in the mailbox and the mailbox isn't close by and it was very cold. Um, and I wanted to wait to open them on stream, but because um, Aaron's family was in town, I was like, it'd be really cool to open them and show her family like these so they can appreciate them too. And uh, so yeah, I ended up opening them up after last week's stream. But yeah, thank you very much. Uh, cut off, yeah, this, uh, there's Purple Heart, and who knows what else. Yeah, it's just a beautiful hodgepodge of um, awesome wood. So thank you, I'm super excited and I definitely will uh, be, once I get the other one set up too, finding a good place for it. I might actually put it up beside my desk. We'll see, I'll find a spot. Uh, you know when someone watches woodworking videos, it's funny because I watch a bunch of woodworking videos uh, as well, but I still said the wrong thing. Okay, let's dive back in here. So, uh, what did we do? We did this. Okay, so now it's time to put on the GT220 pulley. So I've got the motor, or I got a motor. Um, I don't remember there being, oops, a little. I don't remember there being a measurement jig for the first build, so I'm super stoked that that's a thing for this one, um, which is very cool. And then again, we're going to be using um, the thread lock, I'm going to just use some Q-tips and some, let's see if I've got something I can pour a little bit of the thread lock into. Um, let's see, I'll use the outside of this um, plastic Prime, Amazon Prime envelope. All right. Yeah, so with this little jig, it should be quite simple because all we need to do is line, nope, that's not right. 
Okay, <laughs> let me look at what I'm doing. So this should grab into the teeth here. So from here, like this, like this, that should be right. Although, it's still not like, so in the, um, in the image they have, the jig goes out further, so it actually blocks the thing from sliding. Well, with this, it doesn't exactly, so I'll show what I'm talking about. So like, it, the A, like the whole thing should be a little bit bigger, it looks like, or maybe it's just me. No, I'm wrong. I just need it in this very center. So um, this is the right orientation, it looks like, uh, with the teeth facing downwards. So all I'm gonna do is Loosen, take out the set screws. Um, first, let's start off by pouring a little bit of this here. Hey, what's up, Gary? Uh, if you just dropped in, please hit the like button. Yes, if you have not, please do. Um, we got, we just crossed 4,000 subscribers. Um, I, I forgot to, it says there's air horn. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, um, the, I think it was a combination of, um, Delmar told me I should mention this channel more often, and I did on the main channel, and that brought people over. And also the uh, the stream we did on the the Chitty uh, X Max, I think because of how much interest there is in the printer right now, uh, brought over a lot of people, which is really cool. Yeah, it looks like 85 viewers and 53 likes. So if you have not hit the like button, please do. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and pour. Let's take out these little little guys really quick. Are these, oh, that's right. I don't know if we're supposed to shake this, but I'm gonna do it. Hey, what's up, Shuttle? Hey, Ajax. Yeah, why did, why are we not? There we go. Oh, I don't, <laughs> I don't think I've ever used this before. <laughs> the, the, the little, uh, the tip is still on there. Uh, let's cut that off. At least, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm actually thinking that's not the case and that it's actually um, clogged, maybe? Unless I'm just being goofy, I don't know. All right, well, here's what we'll do. We're gonna leave the entire bottle open like this and then we will just um, dip our Q-tip into it. That's what we'll do, I don't know. Always shake it. Okay, I figured as much. Hey, Quinn. Uh, Jack and Aaron are doing great. Aaron's actually in chat. She's probably on the couch uh, in the living room. But uh, yeah, maybe Jack's doing awesome. He's getting so big. Um, if he's awake, she can maybe bring him at some point. Um, but he's doing, they're doing awesome. They're doing great. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, we're just going to dip Q-tip. probably way overkill. And then I'm going to, hopefully this gives me, does anyone know what the set time is? I imagine I've got at least a bit of time. All right, so we've got a little bit on the end here, and then we're going to thread, thread this in. I'm gonna keep threading it. I'm, put, I'm threading it on the, um, the flat portion of the motor shaft. So that way at least I know one of them is lined up because we, we definitely want that. And then the other one doesn't matter. So we'll just take that one, put it on the end of our driver. We are not in focus. I might need to turn off autofocus. Or did I turn off autofocus? I don't think I did. I don't know. Don't shake it now. <laughs> oh yeah. You need to pull up the nozzle. Gotcha. No, no, I think, wait, is that is that really all that, 
there's a tip on it, isn't there? <laughs> Wait. Oh, there's a locking mechanism. <laughs> so that's locked. That's open. <laughs> We're learning, okay? <laughs> I told you guys that I don't use Loctite because of my, my bad experience with the first bottle. So you can see how often I use this stuff. <laughs> that's hilarious, though. All right, let's try, let's try that. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it, it works like it's supposed to. You just have to open the cap. <laughs> All right. So we are going to get low and we are going to, you guys can't really see this, which kind of sucks. There you can, there we go. So we are going to, a is what we want for this one. So we will get it as close as we can. Seems about right. Nope. I wish this jig was a little bit longer. It is not. I think that's fine. That looks pretty perfect. But yeah, I wish it was just a couple of millimeters longer. Uh, blue and red bottle. No, this is this is purple. Um, this is purple Loctite. I did a uh, I did a survey because I don't ever like I said I don't really ever use Loctite. And so before I purchased this, I did a survey asking what people recommended and purple won so although when i asked in chat last week purple did not win so yeah i think we're good i think that's fine hopefully i'm going to just tighten these a little bit more all right we should be good yeah i can show you guys i mean again um, basically you want that to be roughly center where those teeth are. Um, so that, that should be perfect. Just if it was a little bit longer, it'd be easier. So there wasn't this like pivot, like it, it can pivot, which kind of throws off, throws it off. But purple doesn't do much. Perfect. <laughs> it's the way I like my Loctite. Nice and weak. <laughs> uh. I was trying to open the bottle where like 10 minutes, uh, the next one showed me how to, oh, it's, you mean the same thing where you just pull it up like that? I, it's funny because I did see little arrows on it. There's little arrows on, on here, but I thought the arrows were like shake, shake bottle. <laughs> Anyways, never use red. Okay, the red is uh, point of no return. Purple is semi-permanent where blue, oh, so purple is stronger. Interesting. So this is, one second, let me look it up. I got this on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's see what this one specifically says. Someone told me don't go based off of colors. Um, go based off of number or something. I, I don't know if it was number or what the bottle said. Uh, so this is low strength. Yeah, so blue's stronger. Uh, blue's medium strength, because I purchased blue, apparently I purchased blue in April of 2022. I don't know where that bottle ended up. Um, but yeah, this is this stuff, which is low strength red locker, but I mean, it's gotta be better than nothing, right? Like it, it should help a little bit considering I didn't use any on my last build. So regardless, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're getting a little bit, a little bit more, uh, we're getting a little braver every build. Maybe next build I'll actually use uh, blue or something like that on the 2.4. So, uh, also someone remind me that in, in 25 minutes, we're going to open up our giveaway. Okay, uh, all right, so we are done. No, we're not done. We need to <clears throat> grab this. It looks like we need to mind the motor wire direction and we need to grab this and place it on top of here. Like so.
Okay, and we need, it uh, looks like M3 washers and M335s, which are going to be you guys. Trying to ear tap to change the music. Okay, so it says washers. Um, I imagine the shims are probably not what I should be using. Uh, M3 nut, M2 nut. Is there a separate bag for washers? Or am I supposed to be using the shims as washers? I just wanna make sure that there's not like these pre um, precision shims and then washers as well as a separate um, there's a separate thing here. Uh, I can check actually if we're on. When you talk colors, it's for the Loctite brand. Gotcha. Yeah, so this is the Loctite brand. Uh, all right, so Voron 0.2 hardware, shim washers, 50 of them. Okay, so. This only came with 35, according to this. Um, so maybe 50 is overkill, possibly. So I'm thinking that, I don't know. Uh, same exact ones in the little box. Okay, the shims. Okay, I'll just use those. I just want to make sure that those weren't like nicer ones and there was less, uh, like ones with less tight tolerances that were meant to be used for everything else. So it doesn't sound like that's the case. All right. Uh, what do I do with them here? Um, Loctite does not have pink. So maybe this is pink then. Is this, is this considered pink then? I would say this is on somewhere between pink and purple on the color, colors. I don't, I don't entirely know. Washer is usually larger diameter. Yeah. Hey, uh, GB, thank you very much for the merch purchase. Uh, class of t-shirt, nice, enjoy. I, I always like photos. If you if you get the t-shirt and you love it and you want to post a photo somewhere, uh, please tag me. Loctite 222 is purple. Okay, what is this? This is, they put this thinking sticker on it, so I can't really see. Oh, this is 222. Uh, so this is purple. Hey, Turtle, are you going to uh, Rocky Mountain or no? You're not going. Yeah, I feel like these washers could, or these shims or washers could definitely be a little bit bigger because they're, they're almost the same size as the screw head and there's definitely more room in these little pockets um, where they could be a bit wider, which would give a little bit more stability when moving them back and forth, but it's probably not an issue. Okay, I must have tightened these too tight because we are not moving. Oh, 
Why are we not moving? There we go. Okay, we are moving. Okay, I was grabbing the wrong part. Yeah, so we can move the motor back and forth, which will be for tensioning. Um, I think right now I'm just gonna leave them relatively loose. Um, I mean, we can tighten them a bit, but I know that I think we want them all the way in. No, this way. Yeah, I think we want them all the way this way for now. Ah, tightens up quick, okay. So I don't think we're supposed to tighten these down hard ever. Um, it's the little, the little cap is what, that's probably good enough. It still can move, but it's snug. And then we need, oops, <laughs> not to do that. We need one of these caps on the end. Um, uh, I'm not going, my dog is so too careful to leave her with a boarding place. Gotcha, and can ask friends or family to put up with her. Yeah, we, I can relate to that. That's why um, we can't take Monkey, like we like when Aaron went out to California to visit family for the baby shower, I had to stay um, because there's nothing we can do with Monkey. Like there's, we can't put him up in a in a kennel. Um, I guess like we could ask for him to be watched, but it's still like, it's tough. I, I don't know how incredibly comfortable I feel. Um, hey, zombies in the house, what's up banana? Um, okay, so it says check your work. Let's do that really quickly. Uh, so basically, bearings should be aligned with the teeth on that, and bearings should be on the bottom. And I mean, as far as I can tell, that looks pretty damn good. I'll let you guys take a look at it. I mean, I, I'm not gonna. There we go. It, it looks pretty good. Um, also, I guess it's a good time to check your shims if you have not done so. Shim bottom, shim top, shim bottom, shim top, two in the middle. So should be good on that. Now we get to do it all over again, but it should be quicker this time. So we can crank this one, crank this one out. <clears throat> now that I know how to use the um, Loctite bottle, we should be in good shape. So we got the letter B on this one, we've got the letter B on this one, and we want them facing towards each other. Push through like that. We need to grab you. We need to go from, let's see, top down. Yep, the same thing. Hey Jack, uh, the last part of my parts came in today. Oh crap, I missed it. Chat scrolled away. Uh, last part, uh, so now my wife and I can each build. Oh, that's awesome. Her first one, but she's excited. That is so cool. Post photos, uh, Grinch, if you're in the Modbot Army Discord when you guys are either done or during. I forgot I had yummy coffee. <clears throat> okay. So we've got one screw there. We got one screw here. And we are doing the same thing, turning it on its side. Let's zoom in for you guys. Okay. So the same setup where the corner one, dump out some shims. Corner one gets a shim. Bearing. Bearing. Shim, shim. You're going to Rocky Mountain, zombie, aren't you? Almost positive that you have said you were going. It's too bad that teleportation is not a thing. I would love to teleport to. Rocky Mountain for even just a couple of hours, just to, just to do one lap. Say hello to everybody. All right, so same setup. Shim, bearing, bearing, shim, shim, bearing, bearing, shim. The other side is reversed, so there's no spacer starting off with. Then we have a shim like that. Then we've got a bearing. My nose is so itchy today. It's driving me absolutely insane. Curious to see if Jackson has allergies like me to the to animals and life. He sneezes a fair bit, which kind of makes me think that he might. Uh, 
on the right, shim. And then we need one of these spacers on the very top, like so. All right, same exact thing as before. So we'll grab this piece, flip it around. These guys go like that. And we did it. Dang it, chat, um, chat did not start scrolling again, so I, I haven't seen any of chat. Uh, what did I miss? Uh, Lisa, Austin, ideal spacer, diameter, just next time be on the bearing, inner race when viewed above. Hmm. Uh, yes, with Polymaker and West 3D. I wish I could be there too, dude. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Like, on the outside, I'm fine. On the inside, I'm sad. <laughs> I really wish, like, I, I I have so much fun. Like, they're incredibly exhausting to me um, because I am social, but um, social events, like, some people feel, uh, are very stimulated from social events, and it just, like, feeds their energy. And, and it does that for me, too, but afterwards, I crash hard. Like, I usually have a full day of hibernation after any sort of, like, big social event. Um, but man, I, I just love, like the energy's awesome, seeing new faces, old faces, cool things people are working on, geeking out, like it's just, it is such a cool, um, it is such a cool thing. Yeah, anybody that's into 3D printing, um, if you get the chance, oh crap, one second, this is the, this must be the side where I, I forgot to clear out the holes, no. Okay, I think we're still okay. Uh, yeah, anyone that's into 3D printing. So if you're hanging out here in the stream <laughs> on a Wednesday, you're into 3D printing. Um, if you ever get the opportunity, I'm telling you, it is, it is absolutely, um, totally, totally worth it. Why are we, what's happening? It's focusing on this bottle, get out of here. Now it's focusing on my arms. <laughs> Oops. Uh, if you're five minutes, so you're, you're going then, Jeff, right? You gotta be. Closest to any festival of Earth and it's still six hours away. Yeah, I mean, from Earth I had to fly, but to be, to, in my defense, I, I did, like, the first time I went to Murph, it was a work thing, so, like, I didn't have to pay for it, and it was all on the company, and then Lightburn sponsored anybody that wanted to go last time, so, um, yeah, like, I, it would be tougher if that was not the case. So I understand, like, six hours is six hours, that is... There's a, uh, there's a distance. Okay, so these seem nice and tight, but not too tight. Cool. All right, next motor. Uh, and learn to CAD. You'll be happy once you learn how to create your own things. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm not, I'm not great at CAD, but I have enough CAD knowledge to be able to create like functional things that I need. I would like to get better at, at it. I am, um, Steve actually, Steve's the man. Um, I hopped on a call with Steve the other night because Steve's Steve's solid, like Steve's great at CAD. Uh, Steve, I'm talking Steve, Steve builds. Um, Boron Steve, Steve builds, Charlie Steve, Steve Charlie. Uh, and I am super jealous of his CAD skills. And so I said, hey, I would love to just see next time you 3D model something, like just to kind of be a fly on the wall, although that didn't end up being the case at all. I asked a million questions and didn't let him do much 3D modeling. Um, but it was cool to see, uh, he showed me basically his design process for um, the Micron touchscreen housing that he made, kind of like his workflow, how he measured things, the tools he used, stuff like that. And it was very useful to me because um, I've watched a ton of Fusion tutorials and but, it, but there's a difference, and also with CAD too, um, there's a lot of ways to get from A to Z, and maybe some are more efficient than others, but in a lot of instances, there's not near, there's not always a right or wrong. So it's just interesting to see sort of his method for, uh, you know, getting something in, in CAD. And um, yeah, I, so anyways, I'm, I'm very much interested in learning more CAD and uh, fly on the wall. Yeah, more like, <laughs> more like squirrel in the pants, dude. <laughs> just a complete spaz. <laughs> 
Yeah, every time I say like, hey, I just want to be a fly on the wall, I, I kind of laugh in my head because I'm like, me, fly on the wall? Like, come on, the most non, <laughs> non-chilled. <laughs> Anyways. All right, so this one needs to be way higher up, like so, which is cool. Um, so for this one, we'll do the same thing. We will dump a bit of the Loctite out onto here, like that. It's probably plenty. Hey, Nice is here. I was talking about you earlier. Someone asked about the cyborg kit, and I said, uh, Nice is, I, I, didn't see, I, didn't, I hadn't seen you today, but I said that you were building one. It seemed like overall, pretty positive experience, which is awesome. Okay, so again, just putting in the first set screw, um, lining it up with the flat portion of the motor shaft, because you definitely want one of the set screws aligned. So now when I turn this, although it's loose, it turns the motor shaft with it, because it's on that portion. Then we'll get the second one, Get a little bit more of our, I can just probably dip it right in. A little bit more of our Loctite. And get that in. I wonder if it's like on my mustache that's tickling my nose today. I don't know what's happening. Maybe Steve will do a live stream, I'd watch it. I, I told Steve, um, am I correct in thinking Steve is self-taught? I believe Steve is self-taught. Uh, don't quote me on it, but I believe it. Um, yeah, uh, I told Steve, that I would love for him. I've been, so I am, hey, Chief Money, thank you very much for the gifted membership. Uh, Jim, Jim Mac Robot, I like your name. Uh, you got the gifted sub. Um, so, one second, let me get this on just because I don't know what the, the set time is um, on this Loctite. I'm sure it's not that quick, but if I go off on a rant, it could be a while. Uh, That seems right about in the middle, I think. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's tighten this up. Um, yeah, so I am I am big fan of Steve. Like, his streams are awesome. Dude's rad. Super smart guy and just, you know, cool, cool guy in the space. Um, and I've been, I've been wanting for a while for Steve to make, like, not just streams, but also VODs and, or, like, just videos. And um, I, I think that it would be awesome for him to show, like literally what he just did with showing me, even if it was in live stream format, but I think um, I think that they would make awesome videos as well. I know that um, Teaching Tech has done some on-shape videos and they did really well and I thought they were interesting as well. And so, yeah, if he did like a fusion, you know, how to make a custom, like, you know, tool head or custom, um, I don't know, LCD screen mount or something like that, not only are they great because they're showing you fusion and teaching you fusion, but they're teaching you fusion um, doing something that we're all like interested in. A lot of us would be interested in that specific thing. Like it's harder, like for some reason with my brain, it's much harder for me to want to learn fusion when the tutorial's like, here's how to make a, um, like a, uh, God, what's something random? Like a toilet bowl. <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah, you, you could still learn the tools, but doing, using the tools and doing something that you're actually, want to get the end result out of with that thing, I, I find it much easier to learn. Uh, so, yeah. <sighs> uh, Loctite is an anaerobic cure. One part adhesive, uh, one, wait, one part adhesives that cure on active metal surfaces and then add people oxygen in the bond line. Huh. Uh, is Threadlocker, is Threadlocker a different brand than Loctite? I don't know these things. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 uh, Loctite's the main one that I know of. Um, let's like, let me grab a piece of paper. Oh, uh, here, notice, I don't, I can't see it, sorry. I'm, I'm halfway, halfway reaching for paper towels. Um, I'll, I'll be able to see it in a sec here. Oh, Gary, uh, sweet. Uh, Gary, thank you very much for the gift of membership. Jack Black, you got a membership. Thanks, Gary. All right, so I'm going to clean off the Loctite and hopefully keep it from high. Um, 
Basically cures, oh, once Titan, cool, okay. That's good to know, so I don't have to really worry that much. All right, uh, let's see, four more minutes until, I'm just gonna open up the giveaway right now like I did last week, a few minutes early. Um, we'll still let it run the extent we normally do, which is uh, till three o'clock my time. Um, where's the phone? Send, send. I, I don't know if it was Nuno or Tunky last week that like missed the giveaway, but enter into the giveaway. Enter into the giveaway right away so you don't miss it. Hey, Dutch dude! I am sad I don't get to see you, man. Please bring some black licorice for others to try. Also, I think I posted it. Uh, I did post it. Uh, one second here. Pinned okay, so the giveaway form is pinned. Uh, but the Mercury 1.1 and Hydra and all of that video goes live this Saturday. So um, hopefully people will see it. I know the um, Rocky Mountains going to be going on, but I still think there's a lot of people that you know can't go that will be there. But I think they said 2,500 people. Um, I think 2,500 people are uh, registered, which is awesome. And you know, a lot of people won't register in advance, so. I brought two bags, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, Jack says, my PayPal is broke, just tried to sticker you. No worries. Oh, Stroopwafels, yum. Freaking love Stroop. One of the airlines gives out Stroopwafels and it's always such a, like, such a treat. I'm always so excited. I'm like, oh my God, I forgot. I don't know which airline it is. I don't know if it's, I think it's United. It might be United. Okay, so. We've got our secondary motor ready to rock and roll. So now we're going to, same thing, uh, mind our orientation of the motor wires. We want it to be on the same side as this thread. Uh, so we will go like this and go like this. Perfect. Uh, let's get the Loctite out of the way for right now. Yeah, Loctite. <laughs> it's got me all. And then uh, we need M335s, which I'm pretty sure that's why I left these out, but let me measure one. Hey, zombie, thanks for the banana. Uh, he's already overweight on his bags because of all the black licorice. <laughs> yeah, black licorice is heavy. They'll, they'll understand though if you, oh, these are not the right size. These are M330s, um, which I think I would have seen if I put these through, they probably won't go all the way through. I just want to make sure that I did the right one on the other side. Let's see, I can just go like this. Yeah, this wouldn't have worked anyway. Um, yeah, if you just tell the airlines that, you know, you're going you're going to the United States and you want you want them to experience black licorice and you know get their reactions, they'll they'll let you through. <laughs> they'll wave you through. Alright, one, two, three, and four. I'm actually overweight on the bags. It wasn't, it wasn't KLM. Uh, I know that I've flown KLM when I went out to Sweden. Uh, we've definitely flown KLM before, but um, no, this was this was domestic. I don't, I don't think KLM does domestic. I think that's mostly um, to like Scandinavian airlines. Okay. KLM might as well though. Um, I just, I know that the one that I've had more recently was, had to have been a domestic airlines. It was pretty cool though, because one of the air flight attendants on uh, one of my flights, it might have been, it was it was to a trade show, um, actually for this one, the first one, I'll just, she had a Dalla horse uh, necklace on her, um, and I said, oh, you're, you're Swedish, and so I got to I got to say my couple of words to her, and she got all excited <laughs> from one Swede to another. For anyone that doesn't know what a dollar horse is, it's a bright, I don't really know what it represents, but my mom always had them growing up in our house. They're like wooden, colorful horses. Um, and I don't even know if they're Swedish. They might be Danish uh, in origin. Nope, Swedish, uh, I lied. It is Swedish very much so. Yeah, I spelled it wrong. Wait, no, no, I spelled it right. Yeah, dollar horse. So they look like this. Um, my mom always had a bunch of these. When I say a bunch, we had like four. I don't know if that's a bunch, but. Yeah, uh, Dalla Horse is a traditional carved painted wooden statue of a horse uh, originating from in the Swedish province of uh, D Dalarna. I don't know how you say that. Uh, do you know if the printed parts are ABS plus? That might explain manic problem. Uh, I did hear that they were ABS plus. That is what um, I was told. That being said, I've used ABS plus on my previous Boron Zero without issues. Um, and that was 
the accent parts on the last, I think it was on the LDO build, I used them. And I haven't had any issues. Uh, granted, again, they were the accent parts. I don't think I used them for the primary. So time will tell. Um, I don't know. I've heard mixed, we had, we had this conversation, I think, on the first stream that I've had some people have had issues while other people have had no, other people's, other people have had no issues. You taking off? I uh, gotta run some errands before tomorrow. Hey, thanks for stopping by and have, have a ton of fun. I, I will take any and all photos. I almost feel like we should start a, a channel called like our rep rap festivals and just have that for like photo dumps or stuff like that. That'd be kind of cool, especially with there being four of them now. Uh, hey, nice. For the 2.4 that you're building from Cyborg, are you also using the um, ABS Plus parts? <clears throat> when's your when's your um, when's your plane taking off, Dutch? Nice that ASA is becoming a standard. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I have nothing against ABS, but ASA is just like it's more refined cousin uh, with UV resistant properties. And the only reason why I didn't use it exclusively before was there was a pretty steep cost difference at one point when ASA was first um, becoming spooled, it was quite a bit more expensive and there wasn't a lot of manufacturers making it. So yeah, if, if, um, if ASA ends up having the same level of availability in terms of colors and stuff like that, and, and manufacturers and price, I don't see why anyone would use ABS over ASA. It can do all the same things. That's time 210. Okay, I have no idea how that translates. Uh, we're gonna get you and Aaron and Jax to rep rep first this year. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. I don't know how what we would do with the dogs. I would love for Aaron to go and baby Jack, even though I don't know if I want him to go this year. Like I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned about uh, having a baby on an airplane. Like how, how, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like we need to get him out to just like the park more before we try to fly him across the country. But yeah, I would absolutely love for you guys to be able to meet both of them. Did Dutch answer my question? I think he's saying for short for Jackson. I've been calling him Baby Jack, although it's J A C K. But I, I'm fine. With, I'm fine with however you want to say it. Although I don't know. I don't know. Aaron might be like, it's not spelled like that. Okay, so this is too tight. I've tightened it a little bit too much. Okay, so nice. Nice is using. Yeah, I missed your response. I wanted to see if you were, I think you are using the printed parts. Yeah, you are, okay, cool. Jackson is too young for that many germs. Yeah, I um, I want to get him, like he went to his first restaurant when Aaron's family was out here. Although he slept the entire time. He's such a, it's wild. Like there, there was someone's birthday at this Mexican restaurant. So they had like a big, like almost the equivalent of a mariachi group um, that came up behind Jackson's stroller and um, there we go, it's time we're moving. Um, and like had drums and we're singing mariachi, like happy birthday in Spanish really loud. And Jackson just slept through the entire thing. So he can be really good, but yeah, I just, he needs a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> he needs a little bit more, um, I think, time to get used to the outside world. So it's warming up here though. So we do plan on, we've been doing some walks around the neighborhood and we plan on getting him out a bit more. Next year he can eat street, oh gosh, I would love, I, so I, I'm not feeding him anything because he's a baby, but the other day he was crying and I was eating fruit snacks and I did get the fruit snack and put it up to his lip and he, he went and like sucked on the fruit snack and you just saw his eyes at first, he was like, what the heck? Like, he is like this kind of, he gets this look on his face where he looks kind of disgusted. Like, um, for example, if he's hungry and I get the binky and not a milk bottle, he gets excited thinking that the binky is milk bottle, but then after like one go, he realizes it's not the milk bottle, so he like, kind of like one eye spits it out and so he did that with the fruit snack and then i guess like he must have tasted that it was a fruit snack or something and then instantly started sucking on the fruit snack more i stopped him like right after but it was just i'm excited when he is a bit older and can try some of these different things hey what's up jerry 
Uh, go outside too many germs um, and the bane of all natural light. Yeah, he, he's very sensitive to the sun right now. My daughter did not sleep a whole night until she, oh, that is awful. One second, I got a work message. Huh, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like it is working. Normally I turn off Slack, I almost always do. Let me see, really quick. Okay, uh, let's see. Remember to have a cam ready when you first give him a chocolate? I will, I definitely will. We used to put the pacifiers in tea or coffee or juice just to get faces. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> or rum or bourbon. Not yet, not yet. Okay, um, so we still have, if you haven't um, signed up for the giveaway, there are currently, how many entries do we have? 58 entries for the giveaway that's pinned in chat and there are currently 108 people. So only half of you guys uh, only half of you guys have uh, entered into the giveaway. Uh, is YouTube your full-time job? No, 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 no. I work, I'm a full-time employee for Lightburn, uh, Lightburn software. So laser design and cutting. I, um, I've i never, I've only done YouTube full-time for like two months. I've always worked. So before I was working at a bar, then in 2017, I worked for Matter Hackers from 2017 to 2020 uh, full-time. And then I was solo for two months. Um, and then Lightburn, reached out to me looking for uh, so a support person slash kind of content. And at the time I was wanting to do YouTube full time. So I said, no, I, um, I'm not looking for a full time job. The most I'd be wanting to do is 20 hours a week of contract work. Um, and they wanted me for 40. We met in the middle at 30. So I was a contract worker at 30 hours with Lightburn for probably six to 10 months. Um, and then I switched over to, to a full 40 hours, but still contracted. And I just became an actual full-time employee, um, like not a 1099 contract worker, but a full-time employee March 1st of this year. So it's been a month and a half roughly right now. So no, I, I if you go on Lightburn's YouTube channel, um, there's a good chance that like nine out of 10 of the last videos for the last year and a half are, are me. <laughs> Uh, I'm not like my face isn't in any of them except for one of the new types of videos we're doing where it, like my head's a floating bubble. Uh, but you'll hear my voice and you'll see maybe some familiar in some of the in some of the footage in the blurred side. You can see like, hey, that looks like a V minion or that looks like a Prusa. So, um, hey, Daniel, which side of Idaho are you at? Uh, I'm in I'm on the edge of Nampa and Caldwell. So right on the edge of Nampa and Caldwell is where, where we're at right now. Uh, once he's safe, nothing, uh, once he's crawling, nothing is safe. Yeah, I'm excited for him to start crawling, but I'm also uh, terrified because the ground is like, a, um, the ground is like my secondary workbench. There's, I mean, I've got one, two, three, four, five printers, six printers right here on the ground amongst a bunch of other stuff. So baby proofing is gonna be interesting. It's gonna be, we're gonna have to gate him pretty heavily to certain areas. Yeah, yep, yep. Uh, almost missed the stream was watching Steve's here to build in preparation. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're still going. Uh, we're definitely making some more progress. I was eyeballing the NyQuil bottle. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> also, if you have not hit the like button, please do. We're at 84 likes and we are trying to get to 100. All right. So, yeah, giveaway is open for another 21 minutes. Then we're drawing a spool of Polymaker filament. This is with global shipping. So, um, if you have not signed up, definitely do that and let's get back into it so we have got our motors done our ab motors are done which is awesome uh we've got our little tensioners on let's verify that i didn't screw up on this one let's see this one should look like this which should be that yeah, looks about right um show you guys this one you can verify that nothing looks awfully screwed up. We've got two bearings on top that are relatively aligned. I can't really get the cam straight camera angle. But yeah, they're relatively aligned with the teeth of the motor. Um, so should be good, hopefully. Uh, going to have to print corner pieces and soft TPU for all the sharp corners. Yeah, I know that um, Stefan put out that short where he printed, he like threw a watermelon, I think it was a watermelon, at the corner of his furniture. It wasn't a watermelon or some kind of melon that split and then he put 
I'll, I'll finally have a use for the TPU that I've been hoarding for years. So, uh, if you haven't signed up for giveaway, thanks, I need printer. <laughs> Uh, so far, Cyborg Kit's been fine. I know that Mandic put out his video and um, and um, he had some issues with print quality. Knock on granite or knock on quartz so far it hasn't been the issue with me. Um, I haven't seen any warping or layers splitting, um, but that does not mean that there won't be any, but I'm, I'm definitely hoping for the best. So, um, okay, so. The A and B drive go on the left and the right. Secure the drive units. The two rear screws attach to the threads. The screws are fastened into the preloaded nuts. Interesting. So there are how many screws? Um, only two screws, it looks like. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. So there's the two screws that are already sticking out, and that's what these are. Okay, so we need to align a bunch of stuff really quick. So let's grab, um, let's grab this knock on quartz. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I will say, Lisa, that the, like, if you go into Lightburn initially and you don't know what you're looking for or laser stuff, it can be quite overwhelming. I mean, I've been with Lightburn for a year and a half now, and I still learn stuff all the time. But to learn the basics in terms of, like, um, you know, how to uh, use the layers, how to use the preview window, how to, um, what are some other things? Like, let's, I just did a video on the test, uh, material test tool, which is a tool that allows you to just create a simple grid of speeds and powers um, which is great when you're trying to dial in your settings for a specific material, like that stuff, it, it's pretty, you'll pick it up pretty quickly. I, I think I, I have no, no doubt, but there's definitely other stuff that's like, Oh, okay. That's, um, it, it's gonna, it takes, you know, it's a whole new, whole new technology. So it definitely takes some time. Uh, okay. So as far as things go here, Hey, what's up DJ? So we need to line up. I've got these, um, these nuts preloaded on here so these three we need to line up over here and one of them needs to line up over here so we're going to work on that let's see so this is going to be sitting like this it looks like um so yeah so it looks like It's gonna take me a few to get this lined up. <laughs> I guess what I could do is just um, do a couple of turns. Let's see, so like, I turn this too. And it's not threading. That means that I don't have it lined up. Like these nuts. I bought Lightburn a couple of years ago. I need to dive more into it. Yeah, they also come out with a lot of updates. I mean, a ton, even in the year and a half I've been there. Um, the cool thing is, so like when you get, oh man. After this, I'm gonna go and <laughs> figure out what's going on my nose. Um, but yeah. The cool thing is, is that, so when you get a license, the license comes with one year of updates, um, but if you don't care about the updates, then it works for life. Like you, you up till that one year of updates is, is out, um, but then you can renew your license. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the renewal cost is one fourth of the cost of, um, of the full license. So it's, it's really not expensive, which is nice. And I mean, there's, there's, um, constantly new updates coming out like it blows my mind the amount of new features being added all the time and some of them aren't even like we're trying to do a, a little bit better job of highlighting some of those features because some of them like a release will come out and there's some super cool features um but they're not like 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 they're not um they're not shown as like a big highlight like we when we released support for fiber lasers there was some very cool other features in that release um but they kind of got um kind of swept into the shadows because of the other cool stuff. So yeah, it's, um, it's been fun. I've really been enjoying, so we need M3 by 35s. I've really been enjoying my time um, and, and playing around with lasers. Uh, Vorn announced something for the 2.4. Yeah, so 
so I, I didn't realize that the 2.4 wasn't the 2.4, but it's a completely different Voron printer. I just had never heard of it before. I'm still excited to see more about it, but yeah, I, I completely misunderstood and thought that it was like a dual, um, I thought that it was maybe like a dual head for the Voron 2.4. Okay, let's see if that's lined up. Okay. All right, so we just need to line up one more on this side and then we're good to go. For this one, I might be able to just go from the side, actually. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, the 2.4 is for 24 inch. I, I had no idea. I thought I knew all the Vorons. I, I thought it was Legacy Trident 2.4 V0 and Switchfire. I didn't know that there was another one. Needs to go a little bit further. What's happening? There we go. I think we're all lined up. All right, so we can tighten this one in place. So yeah, most of the work with uh, Getting these AP motors on is just aligning the four. Well, I guess it's three. It's three of the uh, T nuts or the the drop in nuts, and then one of them is. Why am I not focusing the way I want? Is this in focus? Kind of. Um, the other one's just a tapped extrusion. Don't forget. Don't forget VK. What's VK? bumming me out a little bit. My focus is bumming me out. I'm gonna go to manual focus. There we go. If you go to the Vorn Discord and put serials, you can see the 2.4. Oh, there's only one serial. 24 was a one-off build. Gotcha. Interesting. I wonder if they're bringing it back then and like gonna make it kind of part of the Voron um, like core lineup. The OG Voron kits. Oh, VK is an OG Warren kit. Pretty sure RCF has the only 2.4. Maybe he decided to update it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm excited to see what comes out of uh, the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. One cool thing about the Rep Rap Fest, too, is that like a lot of times that's where things get released. Like, pretty sure that's where they, that was the first time they showed off the 0 0.2, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I think they showed off something else there. Was it the Stealth Burner? They got released like right around that time. I, I can't remember. Also, I just realized Turtle that you posted quite a long time ago saying that you're gonna build a uh, annex, uh, an annex printer. Are you going with the um, Fabrico kit? Are you self sourcing? Hey, PF Dennis, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships. Um, who all got them? Let's see. Thank you, thank you. Um, it looks like Steve, Grants Auto, uh, Dutch got one, Zex, Zexaltor, and I think that's... Oh, and uh, Linus. Thank you, Pia. All right, so we've got this. Uh, 10 more minutes until we're gonna do the drawing for the Polymaker filament. Fabrico kit, nice. They're not, are they in stock yet or no? I, I was looking at them a while back. I don't think they were in stock. I don't, I don't know if that's changed since. I'm excited to see the Rooks. Yeah, Rooks are still not shipping yet. Are they the right um, zombie? I, I was looking the other night. Um, it's been a couple weeks, but I was doing my, my like semi, semi-regular uh, perusing of what's all out there. 
All right, so we've got that one done. Let's get this other guy mounted here. Uh, this one's going to be like this. Okay. Uh, not yet pre-order. Okay. They're awesome, um, awesome looking printers as well. I know that the first I, I got to see them at Murph last year for the first time. Is I never I never actually even heard of them before, uh, before Murph last year. And I talked to two guys on um, the NX team, and they were super friendly. Oh shit! I scratched the extrusion again. I will say I do think that this, um, I do think that the anodization on these extrusion scratch is a bit easier than these two, but I did I, I did scratch the LBO ones as well, so it's definitely not a just these. Okay, so we got two of them lined up. Let go of my nut. Where is the smallest? 2.5. Okay, I'm missing the smallest driver. Okay, I guess we'll just keep using this then. All right, one last one. This one was a little bit easier to line up than the other one. Let's see if this one goes in. Let's go. Let's go. I feel like we got lucky on that. All right, tighten this up. a little bit more wobble now that those are on but we'll see <laughs> no but it should be getting a kit nice how many rooks do you have um zombie two already because i know that you've been showing the the rook 2020 right like i've been I feel like <laughs> every time i'm like trying to go to sleep and i'm on twitter i see you posting the uh, tool head on your 2020 just going <laughs> absolutely crazy. Uh, the DLL PDF, DLL PDF, what is that? Uh, do you want the beer for the giveaway? It might drop dead. Uh, no, no, you don't, you don't, you don't have the beer. I'll send you an email. Um, yeah, I appreciate you asking, but in this case, no, if you need to drop off and you're in, you are in. It's different when we do like big um, milestone streams if there's big giveaways, but yeah, for the weekly one, it's it's fine. What are the D? What are the DLL PDF powder coat extrusions? <clears throat> what is the red filament? I believe. I believe it's uh, E Sun ABS Plus, just the regular red. It's a really nice red. Um, it actually very much so reminds me of um, the Voxel Voxel PLA. Um, they have a fire truck red, and it looks. I might be out of it. It looks. It looks very similar to it. It's. It is. It's like a true. To me, it's like more of a true red than. Um, there's quite a few reds I've seen that are kind of more on the edge of being orange in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I, I do like this red. I think it looks nice. Okay, it's probably good. I don't know how many times I'm gonna keep turning this. We're, we're probably good. All right, let's move. Oh crap. Right, let's move this to the trash so we don't get any more Loctite on things. All right, so we have got 
our AB motors done. Sick. All right. So now it's AB idler time. Uh, all right. All right. Put this off to the side again for a minute here. Yeah, the game plan was to get done with AB motors, AB idlers, and the Z-axis. And I think that that should be a piece of cake at the pace we're going at. I mean, we might be like a little bit further, but maybe not. Maybe I... We'll see. Um, so let's start off with uh, this guy and uh, this guy. These are definitely the 35s going through top. Oh, you guys can't see what the heck I'm doing. Classic, classic me. All right, there we go. Uh, it looks like a little red. Like, yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, oh, it's fire red. So it's fire. Okay, that makes sense then. So it's not the standard red. Thank you for clarifying. Or suppose. Yeah, they're fine. All right. So on the bottom of these, we are doing shim bearing bearing. Where's the bearings at? Looks like we need four fims and four bearings. One, two, three, and four. And we are going the exact same on both of them. So it's just shim, bearing, bearing other direction, and shim. And then this is We'll leave this kind of on the side like that for right now. Rinse and repeat on this side. Shim. Okay. Uh, thank you for your EV36 live video. Use it for USB connection work great. Just had a slightly modified one command, had two boards laying around for two because I couldn't flash. That is awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Nuno, for the feedback. I, that was, I, man. <laughs> I spent a ton of time pretty frustrated in here playing around with the EBB can stuff or just can stuff. Um, so I was really happy when I figured it out. And the fact that the feedback I've gotten has been so positive. I just, my goal is, I mean, it's typically the way I try to do my videos is do the thing I haven't done before. What about it's easy? What about it's not easy? What were the things I like I failed on? What were the things I did well on? And sort of regurgitate that in a way that hopefully other people are able to because I feel like a lot of us find, um, I mean, even people watching my streams will message me saying, hey, like, the thing you got stuck on, I got stuck on it too, so I'm glad to see how you got past it. So it's really what I'm trying to do is just kind of just navigate the, <laughs> you know, the sort of murky documentation or lack of documentation. Uh, but yeah, that makes me, thank you, you know, I, I'm glad to hear that. Um, GFV is a printer is for Ants Discord and has its own website. Oh, interesting. I, you know what, I think GFunny might have told me about them, maybe. I can't remember if you funny ordered some of their extrusions before. Uh, I just ended my script prints and I will soon start to print the ERCF in the same color. Sick. Oh, you mean in the same Eastland ABS plus? Uh, nice. I'm reprinting the entire um, ERCF because I found out that the filament that I've been using for the switch wire that I was using for the ERCF isn't made anymore. So I want to keep all of it for the switch wire upgrades and not use it for the ERCF. Um, Okay, so the next thing I need to do is the... Okay, so there's a bulky one of these guys. It's going to go like this. Okay, so like that. And then there is a another one of these that's not quite so bulky. And this one's going like this. Let me verify that that's correct. But yeah, it looks like you're basically following the um, sort of chamfer or fillet on the end of this. They should match up with each other. Um, yeah. Making sure that looks right, but looks right to me. Okay, so we got those. Uh, all the same color, black and red, nice. Uh, very nicely detailed. We'll definitely use it again when I go can. Honestly, I, I've said this before, but I will very likely reference my own video. A lot of times, like as much as the videos are out and they help other people, they help myself a ton to go back and refresh my memory because there's there's just so many things that you can't possibly remember all of them um, unless you do them all the time. So 
Uh, anyone suggestions for Netflix stuff? Mm. Uh, I don't know. It depends on what kind of stuff you like. Aaron and I just finished watching um, a couple weeks ago the The Watcher, which is kind of spooky. I would describe it as a, I don't know if I'd describe it as a horror, definitely a thriller, um, if you're into that. If you're not, then um, I don't know. I don't. I, I, most of the stuff I watch is with Aaron, almost exclusively. Okay, I'm going to remove the giveaway link. So if you have not filled it out, this is it. I'm gonna let it sit. If you're filling it out right now, you have like 60 seconds, and then we will, we will, uh, we'll draw. Preload four M3. Oh snap! These are the uh, are these are the cam locks. So that's new. That's that's cool. Uh, I can download it. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, then uh, it's it's not bad. Uh, Inside Job and Rick and Morty. I can't go wrong with Rick and Morty. Uh, do you think it'd be worth it to convert my LED Neptune 3 to Clipper? I've been using it headless with Octoprint. Very happy with it. The camp looks cool. I've been using it for four months. So it depends. Um, if you haven't used Clipper before, it's there's going to be some learning curve. Uh, absolutely going to be some learning curve. And if you're going to, I would at least um, potentially have an exit door available. Like back up everything. Back up your firmware if you don't already have it. Just in case, because I think Clipper is amazing, but there's absolutely been people I know that have tried it and been like, yeah, it's not for me and that's fine. Um, but I mean, it would, I think it's rad. I like the interface much more than Octoprint. No offense to Octoprint, I think it's great as well. Um, there's just more, I don't know. I, I just like it better. And, and the input shaping is awesome. Um, I, I love Clipper, man. <laughs> so to me, I would say yes, but I would always, uh, one thing I would wish I had done more often is, you know, again, back things up and just in case. Uh, okay, let's do this. Hey, Tesla's in the house. All right. Let's go side before I accidentally click on the one with everybody's emails, which totally happens. Hey, we crossed 100 likes. Thank you, everybody. All right, so we've got how many people in the giveaway? 109. That means I gotta download, download it. Uh oh. I think my mouse might be dying. Why isn't it skipping? There we go. Download responses. Extract all. Upload. Okay, I think I got it. Uh, there should be 109 people. And there is 109. Hey, Tesla, you got in. Nice. You're the last person that got in. Alrighty. There we go. All right, I'm gonna take one second to drink a sip of this and yeah, battery might be going bad. It, I mean, to be fair, it's lasted a really long time. Ooh, gross, the bottom of this is quite dirty. Um, it's lasted a really long time. So if it is going, if it is going bad, then I think it's, it's put in, <laughs> it's put in its time. I'm not, I can't be upset. We have a, um, we have a, uh, I'll just show it to you guys. It's easier to show you guys things. Um, one second. Let's see, let's see the, now let's show you this real quick. Yeah, so we got this. Um, this Yoki Dew for Jackson. Uh, so we've been using this to give him baths, right? You like fill up the little plastic baby tub. And then this acts as a pump and, and it's really awesome. So like one of us is cleaning him and one of us is the uh, designated water sprayer person, which is usually me. Uh, and this thing takes like four AA batteries and it lasts only like two and a half baths. And the baths are quick. Like we're not like, like we're not spa daying him. Like <laughs> it's like clean his head, clean, like, you know, clean him real quick and wipe him off. So uh, compared to this this pump, this, this uh, mouse has lasted like probably 12 months almost. So. Yeah, this thing, this thing is just, this elephant is just the eater of all batteries, so.
Anyways, <laughs> on that note, um, as always, thank you to Polymaker very much for allowing us to do this every single week. Polymaker is a incredible company, supporter of the community, not just what we do here, but so many different projects and um, so many different projects, so many different communities. They're doing stuff at uh, Rocky Mountain Rip Rap Festival. If you're going there, definitely uh, check out Polymaker's booth, Polymaker's area. Say hi to Zombie. And uh, yeah, if you haven't tried out their filament before, there is a link. Uh, my mom just put me in the kitchen sink. Yeah, we were talking. <laughs> I was talking to. Hi. Oh, we can. He's awake. Can you hand him to me or are you gonna come over? No? Okay. Alright. Before we give away, Aaron brought in Baby Jack. <laughs> Yee! Yee! What's up, buddy? <laughs> Hi. We were just talking about you in your bath. We were talking about you in your little elephant bath, kiddo. Huh? Yeah. Hi, I like your shirt. It says, hi, hello there. <laughs> yeah, he's gotten, I don't know, how long has it been since he was on here? It was probably three weeks ago, I think. Or, yeah. So he's he's gained, um, yeah, he's definitely, huh, you packed on a little weight, dude. You like, we call him our milk monster. But always, always, always hungry, huh? Huh, always hungry, Bubba. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. Yeah, he says, say hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's... <laughs> yeah, He'll, he's gonna, he's gonna, you gonna pick the winner? No. <laughs> hey, it's a boy. You've been good for your mama? Nice. Nancy, is he hungry? Yeah. Hi. I gotta give away some filament, kiddo. Huh? I gotta give away. Oh. 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 He says, stop talking, please. Oh, there goes the camera. All right. Oh, they can still hear me though. It's just the camera that got unplugged. Was it monkey? Yeah, figures. Delilah's, Delilah is graceful. Compared to monkey? Compared to monkey. Yeah. All right. Thank you. The elephant. Yeah, the battery eater. Camera's coming back on. Uh, Monkey, it's it's plugged into the wall, and Monkey doesn't understand that the cables are not to be gone through, so he wants to do it. We're back. Uh, love you too. Bye, baby Jack. Okay. Anyways, let's let's do this giveaway drawing, and everyone's waiting. All right. <laughs> um, thank you, Polymaker. Um, if you are wanting to support the channel or try out Polymaker's filament, there is a link down below in the description. If you're looking for some awesome, super cool ABS. Um, They've got, I can't get all of them out right now, but they've got very awesome pop series that are bright. They've got a green, a blue, and a pink, which are super cool. Um, yeah, so on that note, let's let's shuffle it a couple times. And I should probably put it on the screen, huh? <laughs> that threw me, threw me off a little bit. All right, here we go. Three, two, and good luck, everybody. Yeah, Monkey does not understand. Uh, Delilah will like Mission Impossible around all sorts of cables, but Monkey goes right through them. Uh, hey, it's Tor. That's <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> uh, we were just talking about Polymaker filling. Congratulations. I actually ordered, um, so Polymaker, watch, let me show you guys. So I will, if you, um, I'll, I'll send you an email, but you can also just message me on Discord. I think I've got you on Discord, but I'll send you an email. Um, so he let me know that there was some Polymaker uh, Galaxy. I don't know what color he was able to get, um, but I did pick up, and I will say like, it's I like the darker Galaxy colors better than the lighter ones, but I did pick up a couple rolls of this one. Um, so the Teal, Teal Galaxy ABS is in stock, and I need all of them, like the Pokemon, even if I'm not gonna use it for a while, it's Galaxy ABS, and it's awesome. So um, so I did, um, I got the, oh, you got the gray. Yeah, I'm super jealous. So yeah, I picked up a couple rolls of this just to have on hand, because again, I, I need all the Galaxy ABSs and ASAs. Uh, but yeah, if you are, if you, I, I've been refreshing once a day just to see, um, Although I think you said there's a notify me when available, that's how you found out right away. Yeah, I should probably just do that and be waiting at the computer. Um, so, super exciting, it's coming. 
Uh, you should definitely start entering into these. We do them every single week, and considering uh, usually there's around 100-ish people, so I mean, odds are, you know, 1% chance is not bad, and the more you enter, the more chances you've got. Yeah, so I've got this one in, um, and it's still awesome. You can't see the, get the sparkles quite as much just because the contrast, it's a lighter, lighter pigment, but it's still really pretty, and I will absolutely find either a printer build or something very cool to do this. Uh, Galaxy is the sparkly one. Yep, yep. Um, where is... I've got... Yeah, here we go. So here's like... This is not the ABS version, but this is this is the one that Zombie originally uh, told, told me I had to get. And it's been... Um, let's zoom in a little bit, maybe? So this is... this. Yeah, you can see that. This is the Galaxy uh, Blue or Galaxy Dark Blue. It's beautiful. Like, it, it's it's just... Oh, I, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't care who you are. <laughs> Sparkles are pretty, <laughs> okay? So yeah, and it does an awesome job of hiding layer lines. It just looks really good. So um, it, they've had it in PLA for quite a while and now they're going to ABS and ASAs of them and it makes my heart happy. So now we can use them for printer builds, so. Uh, do I print it? Oh, let's see. Um, yeah, I print I print ASA typically like the same as ABS. Uh, I mean, it's a Sirene. Uh, they're very, very similar. Um, you might need to adjust things like flow de depending on, uh, but I, I always just start with my ABS profiles. Uh, Delmar says, hey all, time to walk the dog. Goes, hey, thanks for hanging out, Delmar. Okay. Let's, let's do this. I am on a mission and we are doing great with that mission. So let's get into preloading. Um, so I need, for preloading we need square nuts. Um, using square nuts and we're using Greg's um, no drop nut things. Where did I put them? Seeing them. This happens every week. Um, is there one more layer? Ah, uh, uh. Okay, so there should be a small Ziploc baggie somewhere that has square nuts and little printed nut holders. Um, don't see it there. Let's see it there. It's gotta be somewhere. It's almost impressive how I misplaced these things like I am not. <clears throat> like what the heck? see them. Oh, there's one. I'm a goofball. There's, of course, there's one more layer and they're just right here on top. Like there should be. All right. User error, like usual. Hey, uh, I don't know why the renewals aren't making a no uh, noise. Happy one year. I think, I think G20, that's the first one year I've ever seen. Thank you very much for one year of support, man. I can't believe that it's been one year since uh, we started doing memberships and the channel was able to do memberships. It's crazy. Thank you, man. I appreciate, I appreciate it. I'm glad I saw it too. I have to figure out what's going on because it seems like some things are making, um, some things are having the, the uh, alerts, but other things aren't, which is a bummer. Um. Um. <laughs> Yeah, there was one more layer of foam that I didn't see because it's me, so. Anyways, um, let's focus. So, this is what I was looking for. It's our little bag that's got um, this tiny little square, uh, little printed parts. Uh, and they just make it so that way the M3 nuts don't free slide in the extrusions because aligning them can be a real pain um, if they do. So, we need to, it looks like, according to here, we need to preload four M3 nuts uh, before we put this on right here. So let's let's 
do that really quick. Well, I guess I can check out the Teal Galaxy ABS now too. Yeah, it looks cool, man. I mean, again, I, I think that the darker, darker colors certainly um, give it more pop, but it's still a really cool looking filament. I convinced Steve to get some too. I, was, I, I messaged Steve when I saw that it was available and he was like, all right, I'll get some. He got that and then I think I, I think he said he picked up the Easter bundle too because I was like, Easter bundles, the Easter bundle is really cool too, man. All right, so that's two, we need two more. Hi bro, I am Sarvish? Oh, that's your name. Hi. three now we need one more on this side and we should be able to that scared me for a second it didn't look like it was threaded that hole um it is though it's just me the, it's the extrusions are kind of like a um like a satin black so they're not quite glossy not quite flat um so i couldn't see the threads shining all right so for this one we need it to be facing the left. So we are gonna be using, it looks like this guy. Yeah, so we want the curved, or like the chamfered side to be facing towards the left or towards the outside. So it's going to sit like this. And we also need to align, um, there's a, one more T-nut right here that you can kind of see. Let me focus a little bit more. There we go, I think maybe. Um, so we need to slide this guy. <laughs> I just, <laughs> you guys probably didn't see that, but one of the no drop nuts just like exploded. The back of the driver hit it. Okay, so we need a secondary screw to go through here and let's just try to line this up as best we can. That looks about right. I'm also going to just focus again because it's me and I can't I can't keep anything more than a couple seconds. Um, the Polymaker, Polymaker, I chose teal, which I think will go perfect with my purple LDO frame. Oh, nice. Uh, would you go just a teal ABS FPV? All right, I think that's pretty good. So weird. Uh, I guess the wobble's not that bad. It's kind of balancing out a little bit. But yeah, you can see, I mean, I guess you probably can't see it that well. Let me focus. There's definitely some under extrusion on the top of these parts. I st they still might be fine. Um, they don't feel brittle or weak. But so far I'm not seeing anything that's splitting. Um, which is like what Alan had issues with, which is a positive thing. So we'll see. Carry on until, carry on until something happens, which hopefully doesn't, but. Hey, Ted's in the house, what's going on? Uh, so Teal Galaxy Blue is subtle on pictures, but looks great in person. Um, yes, Teal, uh, Teal Galaxy, I have, I have it, we'll, we'll look at, um, I'll grab a roll of it, one second. Wait one second, I've got it right outside of my door. There's two other printers we need to unbox. Uh, the Anchor Mate M5, and then I got a Flying Bear Core XY that just came in that we need to build as well. <clears throat> not, enough, not enough time. All right, so this is, let's just open this up. This is the Teal Galaxy. It's pretty. Um, I don't even know if it'll pick it up on camera the way I'd like it to. Can you guys, let's see, zoom. 
Oh yeah, all right, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you have to look where the light's hitting it, uh, and it needs to be in focus. You guys can see the sparkles. It's pretty, like it's it's real, it's more subtle, it's for sure more subtle, because it's on the teal, but it, it's a really nice filament. And again, like it's it's hard right now, because um, I have like kind of weird lighting in here since we're doing video stuff, it's all hitting it from one side. But, uh, let me focus back out a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. So, it's nice stuff. Uh, you said the top's under, under tree, you don't feel comfortable with the body. Yeah, it's possible, but it is also possible that they just have their top, um, like maybe they adjusted the top layer flow to make the parts look cleaner and just didn't do that great of a job. So it's just affecting the top layer. I don't know. I mean, again, I'm, I'm torquing down on parts, um, like what, with what I think is is tight enough and nothing's cracking. So that's at least a positive, but I mean, ultimately time will tell. But yeah, looking at things from the side, the walls look solid. The only thing I'm seeing is the top, is the tops just seem a, a bit under extruded. So we'll, we'll see. I will definitely let everyone know. Um, Posted a pickup gray in the live streams. Looks and prints amazing, uh, but it's probably maker, so no surprises there. Yeah. Dual 5015s are bust, but Dragon Burner has been decent so far with one day of testing. Nice. Yeah, I saw you posted. Hey, it's what's going on, Tripods? Are you going to Rocky Mountain or no? I don't remember if you posted online that you were going or not. Okay, so now it's showing that we need the, so this is, this is the, uh, the cam lock things, right? Where, where are those in this kit? I don't see them in this hardware bag right here. I imagine we don't need to install those right now though. That's not until the top hat's done, so. Uh, uh, doing good, doing good. I just trying, we're still, Aaron and I, trying to figure out sleep. Um, we. The first few weeks were very rough. Um, both of us were miserable as far as like not sleeping. But now during the week, I'm crashing in a separate room so that way I can at least get some sleep. And then on, on the weekend, Saturdays, I take Jackson for the entire night since I don't work Sundays. Um, and she's able to get a good night's sleep. So um, the sleep's been the hardest part, man. Jackson's awesome. I love him to death. He's super handsome, such, such a good baby. But like, yeah, the sleep has been brutal. I, we already kind of were like, slept a lot before um and i was always tired and it's just <laughs> it's just scaled since then so i didn't break a piece of this build print quality was amazing nice that's awesome yeah i mean i think like i said i think the print quality looks really nice it's just the top layers i wish they had increased the flow by i don't know a, a bit <laughs> so we'll see the walls look gorgeous though like um the walls look really nice and even the red parts look really nice so We'll see. Time will tell. Um, so one thing, I don't see any preloading. So there's four there, which we did. And I don't see any mention of preloading on the other side. So I guess that we don't need any. Maybe that's because, what would be going on the inside on one side, but not on the other? The door? Is it the hinges that go on the, uh, did I screw up? No. I don't know. I am not sure. Um, no Rocky Mountain, not enough PTO, and low funds to auto and home. Yeah, you've had a lot of stuff going on, dude. I, I know that um, you posted some stuff about like the RV. Well, I think that was, I don't know if that was this year or last year. Um, but I know you had some stuff going on with that. And then I saw you posted a picture recently as well. I'm, I'm not I'm not able, I don't think this year I'm really going to much of anything. Um, but, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully this is the last of it for you because I know you've had quite a few things I feel like going on. Okay, so we need another M3 by 35. Oops. Let's see about making videos of the repairs, but working. Uh, what about cameras editing? Um, would you, are you planning on doing them on the same channel or are you going to do like a separate sort of I don't know, vloggy type channel.
YouTube, I feel, I mean, everyone has their own opinions, but I feel like YouTube's really weird about changing up content on a channel. Like, I mean, even when I try to deviate a little bit, but like sort of like a cousin of the stuff I normally cover, it always feels like the video flops. So it's kind of a bummer. I wish it wasn't that way. Okay, so I don't think there's any preloading on this side. It doesn't look like. Oh, door magnets. Duh, that makes sense. Yeah, you're right. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Mandic? Yeah, I saw Mandic had some warping. Have you been checking the flat side? Yep, yep, I have so far. I've had zero warping. I mean, when I say zero warping, like, if you <laughs> if you were to put them on, like, I don't know, the flattest thing in the world and look at them, there's it's possible at the tiny, tiny bit, like, on a tiny corner, but nothing nothing more than what my parts likely have when I print them. But yeah, I saw Mandic posted um, at least one big part that had serious warping on it. Um, I haven't had any of that. We've definitely checked. We checked the bases of the AB motors. We checked the base of this, which is one of the um, the feet slash um, inlet for the, uh, gosh, the power plug. I can't, words are tough. Um, but yeah, no, no warping at all on any of these. No splintering on any of the parts so far. So I don't know if it was just a bad batch on his end or if we're in for a surprise when we get further along. I, I really don't know. But yeah, I, I have been checking and I actually commented on his video saying that like, Watching your video makes me more paranoid now. I gotta inspect the parts, but the only thing I'm seeing is some um, some slight under extruding on the top layers. Um, but walls look nice, bottom layers look nice, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Nothing, nothing real concerning so far um, on my end. It's all been live too, so. <laughs> uh, is V0 direct drive? This is, yeah, so the V0.2 and V0.1 are direct drive. Um, the V0 original was a Bowden, Bowden extruder. Um, but yeah, the 0 0.1 is the mini after and the V0.2 is mini stealth. YouTube is being really weird these days. If you do live streams, it hurts your regular videos, change type of videos, it hurts your norm. Yeah, it's just, it's weird. I mean, some, like, I know that Nero said that this has been his best couple months he's ever had. And on the main channel, um, the last couple of videos I've done, I've done really, really well. And maybe it's just the content is really interesting. I, and, and you know, that's just, that's just coincidental, but I do feel like YouTube has sort of seasons in terms of how videos perform, but I don't know. I've been on here, been on here for a decade and I don't know if anybody can definitively say they've got it figured out. It's very, very all over the place. How much extra are the printed parts? The, the printed parts don't cost anything, zombie. Yeah, printed parts don't cost anything, which is sick. Uh, so if I go to Cyborg V0, so I was told they might be um, releasing a uh, different version, or, or I think um, I think Raheem was saying that they might be releasing a version without printed parts that'll be even less, but 469 includes the printed parts. It's default, like that price has all of the printed parts, which is why, in my opinion, like it's, it's such a great deal because the ABS alone, if you bought it yourself, would probably be like 40 bucks, but then you add the labor, it's gotta be at least an 80 to $100 value that they're throwing in that nobody else I've seen is doing at no cost. So um, even if you are, so they can be throwing, yeah, exactly. So let's say you're like, you know, you're someone that doesn't have an ABS printer um, and wants to build a V0, then you can absolutely build it with theirs. And if you decide, hey, quality's not up to my standard, just print out all new parts if you want, but you've now got that printer. So yeah, I don't I don't really see any negative. It's not like there's this added fee tacked on. Uh, and again, it sounds like they might be offering a version of it without printed parts. And I don't know how much they can possibly shave off, but even if they shaved off like 20 bucks and it's now for, you know, 450, um, it, it's just, it's, I, I, I have to take that into consideration when I'm critiquing it, right? Like, like it's a few hundred dollars less, you can't expect the exact same as what you're paying $200 more for, then, you know, it wouldn't make sense. But of course, like the things still need to be good. Uh, but I think that, yeah, the printed parts at this price point is wild to me. Um, I will be doing, uh, I will be doing replacing the rusted at rocker panels on my truck. I haven't done this level of body repair using the molder putt. Oh, sick. I'm, ac I'm actually pretty excited to see that stuff too, man. That's really cool. I am big on, uh, I love just DIY and repair stuff. Even if, even if there's times where it makes more sense for me to outsource it and pay someone, like the feeling of doing the thing yourself is so rewarding. 
Um, any experience with the Vorn Extruders M4 Pocket Watch Night Watch Afterburner? Afterburner, yes, I have experience with. I, I think the Afterburner is a great tool head. Um, I just don't think it has the best cooling. Um, I would rather a 2.4 over, nope, I would rather a, yeah, EVA 2.4 or, or I guess EVA 3, which I don't have experience with, but if the cooling is similar over the um, Afterburner, Stealth Burner is super rad. I really like the, like the hiding of the tool headboard. I like the LEDs um, and the cooling is definitely better on it. Yeah, it's it's really cheap, zombie. Exactly. It's it's wild. <laughs> it's very wild. So um, that's like something that I'm really like have to consider that, you know, again, at a $200, like the, what you're getting for the price difference is sort of what I'm gauging. But again, like the product needs to be good and work. Otherwise, is it really saving money if you're replacing everything? But the fact that they give you all the printed parts and Again, the quality is maybe not perfect, but if it's like this, how it's been so far, it's really hard to complain about that. Hey, what's up, BBs? Uh, I did Formbot kit, LDO frame, better rails, can you build bed, PAF, a few other upgrades, spent together, I could have just gotten the full LDO. <laughs> yeah, my first self-source was crazy expensive. Um, I think it was like a thousand bucks. Granted, I needed to get some crimpers and stuff like that and tools that added a fair bit to the cost, but um, yeah, it was, it was, it would have been much, um, it would have made much more sense to just go with the kit. Um, let's see, this is saying the AI layer goes the same size as the A drive unit, the bearing stack should be the same height. Okay, so. Yes. So bearing and two bearings, oops. Yeah, so this is just having us make sure that we haven't screwed up anything as far as orientation goes. Um, I can, we, So basically, this should be lined up with these two on the top, which it is. This is the higher stack. And then the shorter stack, which if one's right, the other one's right. Uh, but the shorter stack is aligned with the two bearings on the bottom going across here. So if you had these swapped, uh, that would you'd catch this here. But we're good. We're, we, we double checked. So fine on that, we're fine on that. Um, has you check one more time. Just again, the we, we looked at this too, but the, the chamfer on the end, if you're looking at it from, it looks like right in front of you from the top, then it should be going like wider towards the outside of the printer, which you can see on this. If we look at it from the top, it's going skinnier on here and it goes wider on the outside, skinnier on here and wider on the outside. So we're good on there. I have a legitimate question, why not buy a form bot? What are the differences between all these cheap kits? I have no idea. I, I've never used a form bot kit. So um, I, I, I don't know. If form, bot, if form bot reached out and said, hey, we, we want you to test out one of our kits, then I, I would consider it. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, um, I haven't necessarily heard bad things, but I just typically, typically I like to speak very minimally about either things I haven't used firsthand. And if I haven't had like other people that I, know and trust their opinion on use it i just i'm like meh i don't know I, I don't like to speak on it so i really don't know i know that at one point formbot kits were definitely not good um i heard of issues at least once upon a time again these could have been when i started in the voron like stuff which was at this point probably coming up on two years but i think that a lot of them have evolved and improved based off feedback uh but yeah i don't i don't know as far as the key differences between the two um ensure that your idler matches cool sweet we are watering plants awesome z-axis all right let's do the z-axis we'll move you back here for a minute so for this we are going to be taking off Taking off this guy. All right, so we've got this. We've got the printed part, which is, no, this is not the right part. I don't think I took out the right part. Uh, my Formbot 0.1 kit was very good. Yeah, so I, I don't, um, I think Polymaker is pretty good. <laughs> 
I don't. I think that Alien might have done a um, Formbot kit too. I'm not entirely sure. I'm almost positive that Tom's kit was a Formbot kit. All right. Um, I hear Jackson screaming from down the hall. Okay, so this is the part that we need. And we are going to hold it like this. And... <laughs> Nailed it. If your lead screw nut does not have M3 threads, use longer screws and M3 lock nut to secure it. Do we have threads? We do. Okay, so this is basically us compressing the nut. And we need... M312s, let's get those out first. M312, M312, right here. I uh, just wanted to pop in and say hi to everyone. Everyone, please keep my in check. Monitors, <laughs> I'm keeping myself in check, man. <laughs> I'm limiting myself to like a coffee a day and I'm not doing monsters unless they're sugar free. I, I'm, I'm doing, I'm trying my best. Thanks for stopping by, man. I'm so, again, sorry to hear about all the stuff going on, but. Like I said, hopefully after the current one you're, you're, you've got going on, there's smooth sailing for a while. But I feel like it's like that in life though. Like it really is when it rains, it pours. Like, you know, everything, everything needs repairs at once. Okay, so we're actually not, um, we're not compressing the anti-backlash. I don't see, yeah, it looks like we're just attaching this to here, the anti-backlash, unless, I don't see how those screws can be, hold, let's, let's try it without first. I think that, I think that we need to compress it when we're putting it on the lead screw. Uh, since I upgraded over half the parts while building my V0, I have enough leftover parts for my form bot kit to build another V0. <laughs> it's pretty much the case with the um, the uh, Ender 5, Mercury 1, and Hydra. I have, like, after swapping everything, I can just rebuild the Ender 5. <laughs> That's funny. Actually, so is this... No, it's like I thought. So this screw... Okay, so yeah, we don't need to tension anything yet. Right now we're just screwing this part in. Hey, what's up, Chris? Uh, no worries, we hit tough times, it only makes us stronger. I agree. Um, I will be at Murph and Earth. Okay, yeah, I don't think I'm getting out of the house this year. Unless you're going, um, I will be at Lightburn Experience. I don't know if you're going to that. It's, uh, it's in Illinois, so it's in your neck of the woods. If you're going there, I'll see you there. Otherwise, um, next year I'll definitely and we'll get out of the house and go to at least one of the events. Um, I never heard of Cyborg before Manic Really's video. Are they newish? Um, that's a great question. I don't actually know. That's about that's about the time that I had heard of them was um, Mandix, right around Mandix um, initial video. So the answer is, oh, are we tightening too tight? Hold on. Okay, I think that's plenty tight. I don't want to tight anymore. I almost feel like we could have used a washer there, but it doesn't show any washer. And I guess once this is in place, it just needs to keep it from spinning. So we're probably fine. Um, yeah, we're not going to tighten that anymore. I'm going to Rapid TCT and Murph, possibly Earth. Rapid's cool. I mean, Rapid's got all of the big, the big machines, all the big toys. M312s. Oh, so we do need to pull out our printer again. Rapids always in Illinois, isn't it? Or in Chicago. In Chicago, I think it's always in Chicago. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so let's 
tilt this like this. Let's not set this down on that. Nope, you guys won't be able to see this if I go like that. Um, maybe if I zoom out more. Okay, so we're basically gonna be attaching it to these two nuts on the back of the bed. Um, so I need to... I need to figure out what I'm doing. Okay, so we need M312s. Let's get out the screws again. Same ones we were just using. Uh, like Prince said, I better show up to their conference in October. I live about two hours away. Yeah, you, you you gotta show up, man. I will be there. I don't know. Um, I think because we are, it sounds like we're gonna be recording or live streaming or, or do, we're doing some video stuff. So something tells me that I will be working. I will definitely be working. I just um, don't know how much downtime I will have. I, it might be behind a camera for most of it, capturing footage for like uh, videos of some of the talks and stuff going on the panels. But regardless, if you're there, I will absolutely see you there and give you a big hug. So it'd be really cool to see you. All right, so this needs to go like this and we need to, it'd be nice if I had an overhead light so I can see. It's very difficult to see what the heck's going on here. I will show you once I have a way of doing that. Let's see. All I'm doing right now is moving Moving these nuts around there on the back of uh, the bed, trying to line them up. Okay, that looks about right. All right, so again, there's two nuts on the back of this bed. You can kind of hardly see them. Uh, if I zoom in, there we go. These guys. So we are going to be placing this like this and then and then screwing it in. So I don't know how I don't know how to show you guys this angle, but you get it. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, there's like no I don't think I've got any good way if I move this up like that. So this is where the overhead would uh be nice. All right, we'll, we'll see it. We'll figure it out. Uh, hey, what's up, Dominic? Uh, I would mount the support on the motor and then on the bed. I would mount the support. Mount the support. What support? I dropped it. It's okay. Oh no, I'm curious if this will even work. Yeah, that's working, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just, I got, um, I got this part on. I'm doing my best to Center it, it's close to close to where I think we want it, so. Tighten this in place. Really tough to show some of these. Um, if the parts were bright, I think I'd have an easier time, but because they're not, the black on black is like really hiding it. Okay, so now that I've got it in place, I can show you guys. Um, Let's see. So this is the piece. It's just two screws right here and right here, and that mounts it on. And this is what the lead screw is going to be going through. 
it's going to move it up and down. So it's, it's pretty, it's like fairly simple, just <laughs> difficult, <laughs> difficult to show. Um, but you can see it right here. All I did was put this piece onto the back of the bed, put two bolts through it. So now I need to remember to put this part on. Um, first you need to preload stuff it looks like. So let's flip the printer upside down. Uh, let's match the orientation. So it looks like this is the orientation. And we need to preload. Bunch of preloading happening here. So we need to do three here and three here. Let's get out our square nuts. And I think these are all gonna be for the uh, the panels. One, three, four. Also, I'm gonna pick up, pick up that piece off the ground before I forget it's there and then start freaking out. Uh, not right. Okay, three in there, now we need three in the front. Okay. So we got three, three here, three here. And now we need, um, so it looks like three and three on the exact opposite side. So the same outside. So we'll flip this deal 180. Yep. And then we need three. So three here, three here. Start with that. All the nuts, we need all the nuts. So three here, three here. What is the best bed mesh algorithm to use with camp? Um, I have no idea. I'm using whatever. God, I don't even know what I'm using on. I can I have to plug in the mercury and see what it's using. Is it bilinear? Is that the default? <clears throat> Saturn Mablu is doing a patent, is trying to patent open source material that someone else created. Yeah, I'm curious to see what becomes of that or how they respond. In the past, they've done a really good job of sort of clearing the air with the things that have happened. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I know that there was like kind of some misinformation going around about them trying to patent boron stuff when they were just using a schematic as an example of some form of like core XY thing. I don't exactly know the details, but. We'll see. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens in this space in the next, like, I mean, even just the remainder of this year, honestly. Because based off of the message that Prusha sent out or their, their response, I'm curious to see, curious to see how much of their stuff they truly make open source. Uh, I think default is bicubic. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, literally using pictures from Boron Design. Hey, what's going on? Good evening. What's up, Pedro? Yeah, I know they used pictures from Boron Design, but they weren't patenting Voron stuff. It was that was clarified after the fact. So yeah, I don't really know. I mean, I can't read Chinese, and I don't know Chinese patent laws or how it all works. So. Until, until I see someone that like knows, I, I don't know. It's all just, there's been a lot of like, there's been a lot of mo like mob uh, mentality stuff. And until, until someone that knows 
says definitively. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't want to make assumptions. <clears throat> All right. So on the back side, it looks like one side we are doing three on one side and four on the other side. So let's do that. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Wait, yeah, one, two, three. Okay, so I say three on the left side, so three on this side. Um, I need Sobel to open source their parts. I designed a Z-linking bracket. I need to install a belt package. I need Sobel to open source their parts. Was there plans on them? You mean, are you talking about, um, you talking about the injection molded parts, zombie? You just want like STLs of them or just step files of them? Also, did they ever say they were going to? I don't, I don't uh, maybe they did and I missed it, but I don't, in our, in my conversations with Sobel, I don't recall them ever saying they were going to open source the hardware. But maybe they did. I don't know. Things change all the time. Uh, when it comes to Clipper settings, I always recommend reading the Clipper docs on how each setting works to better understand yourself. Just copying someone else's code can lead to issues. Yeah. The Clipper docs are pretty good. I mean, there's some some of the things I look at it. I'm like, I don't fully get it. Um, and so I go out searching for other people's examples as a reference point of, ah, OK, that's what that means. That's why they did that. Um, but yeah, they're, the docs are pretty thorough, uh, generally speaking. I've had to use them quite a few times lately. Okay, so we did three on that side. This side needs four. Uh, just looked, only one of the bamboo patents are outside of China. Also, Clipper, uh, yeah, step file of the printer. Are, are, they said they were going to release it, the zombie? Like, that's the thing they've said? Because that's really cool. If they do, that's very cool. And there's always Discord when you need help. Yeah, that's true as well. Hey, Kiri, uh, question for you, Pedro. Do you know what's going on with the, um, the K1 machines from Creality? Because... They're calling it Creality OS. I have one coming. I, I don't know when. They just told me that today there was shipping delays, but they have one coming. Um, I have one coming. Um, and they're calling it Creality OS, but based off of their presentation, it clearly looks like it's fluid. So I'm curious if you know anything about it, if you guys have had any more conversations with Creality or have had any conversations with Creality or kind of what's going on with that. Okay, so let's verify uh, three on the back, four on this side. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then there should be three on each side. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. This looks good to me. Hey, Vikings in the house. What's going on, buddy? Considering how many Chinese companies are making bamboo parts, I could see why they would do that. Here are things Bamboo is trying to patent. Core XY, LiDAR on 3D printers, the AMS touchscreen on 3D printer. But, but like, where like who said they're trying to patent that i've seen i've seen images in chinese but i don't know what they mean yeah they're using fluid on their sonic pad um which is fine but it sounds like the issue is that they changed the licensing or either they changed the licensing or didn't change the licensing but they changed the like the uh, footer so like it doesn't say that it's fluid anymore they just replaced the names um and i don't think did it i think they did end up um i think they did end up releasing the source code the right pedro i'm almost positive that they recently did so at least the source code's out there i'm almost positive uh but i, I know that they still haven't like it doesn't say fluid like um the chitty chitty is using fluid but it says fluid like they've modified clipper for sure it's not it's not vanilla clipper um But they released all the source code and they haven't changed up the they haven't changed up fluid stuff. Uh, they use fluid with their branding, which doesn't meet open source licenses. Who who does? Uh, Creality or Chidi? They're trying to patent Quark's Five Motion System. I don't know. I haven't seen that. I, I don't know that they are. Again, I've seen I've seen some screenshots, but I I'm not I'm not a Chinese patent person. I, I have no idea. 
Uh, just said then to continue working on the Fender. Nice. I saw you posted the Patreon update or like an update on Patreon yesterday. Uh, initially didn't release their changes to the source code. They have it now. Okay. However, we believe that you're still making changes and not releasing really those new changes. It sucks. I um. Have you have you tried reaching out to them? Like, have you have you emailed them? I'm happy. Like, if if um, I'm happy to forward your email to them or you to i'm happy to give you the email i have with my contact there okay so creality creality is saying it like there's hey what's up dan uh, i'm doing pretty good I'm doing pretty good thank you yeah i agree i mean i'm i'm like boggled too like so for example right like the printer on the ground right here, it's the Chitty X Max 3, which is based off Clipper. And they kind of have Clipper hidden. So like if you go to the IP for the printer, it just doesn't load. It's hidden behind a port. You have to type in port 10,000, 10,088 to get to the fluid uh, interface. And maybe they did that because they just, for people that buy the printer but don't really know fluid or they're worried will screw things up, they don't want them to have just the easiest of access to it. I don't know, it seems silly to me. As long as they have the um, stock config ready to be re-flashed or re-applied, then to me, it doesn't really matter. You can only do so much damage. You can always reset back to zero. Um, but the interesting thing to me is, is like the screen on here. So like they're using a, they're using a um, maker base board. That's a custom maker base board. I found the board it's based off of, and they're basically using a stripped down version of it. So it's instead of having five drivers, it has three drivers and it has just less IO, um, which I'm assuming is for cost savings. They like basically, it seems like they paid MakerBase to make this board for this printer specifically. And then they're using what's essentially a CAN board, but they're using it over USB-C for the tool head. And that's how, that's why there's only, people were asking in the live stream, why is there only three drivers? Well, because the driver for the extruder is attached to the extruder. Um, but the interesting thing is, is like this board is compatible with Clipper screen and they're using Fluid, yet they decided to make their own screen firmware and have a board that's using their own firmware, which seems to, not work that well with Clipper. Like it doesn't display the, unless you use their slicer, it doesn't display the preview of the file that's being printed. and doesn't seem to update as far, um, at least for me, what I've seen, it doesn't seem to always update settings correctly. Um, when they could have just gone with Clipper screen, I think, I don't see why they couldn't have, um, as long as they gave credit, like they're doing with Fluid saying, or like at least showing that it's Fluid and saying that it's Fluid and providing it. It's just weird to me. Like why, if they're using Clipper and they're using Fluid, why not use Clipper screen? Like it would have been easier. People would have been familiar with it and it would have been a better solution than making your own firmware for this Clipper. It just, some of the decisions, man, are just so weird. <laughs> I don't know. I basically contacted them via email and Twitter, but honestly at this stage, I'm not in strike here anymore. Gotcha. Just working and looking here. Uh, it is board meeting night. Gotcha. Well, happy, happy Wednesday. Uh, I'm not sure I would like that printer, but I would like to check it out. Yeah, I, I, there's good and there's not good. I mean, with most printers, I feel like that's, nothing's perfect. So there's definitely good things about this printer. It's big, it's core XY, it's fully enclosed. It's got a heater, it's got a big fan. It's Clipper, um, there's, you know, there's positive for sure. Um, and there's also the usual questionable things or why is the, why are there these firmware settings that don't make any sense? So, you know, the huge. <laughs> um, okay, so let's, let's, we're getting closer to where I want to, to get to. Um, so we preloaded everything and the next few steps we'll be installing the feet and doing so we will be closing off the ends of the extrusion frames. This is the last chance, cool. So we did preload. Um, oh, we're preloading more nuts. Wait, what? This is the last chance. Oh, these are nut checks. <laughs> nut check. All right, so let me move this so we're in the correct orientation. So three nuts here, three nuts here, three nuts there. We've got that. Um, same thing on the other side. Three, three, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That looks good. Uh, this is this is the angle from the back. So here it's showing. Three on one side, four on the other side, one on the top, two up here. We've got all of those nuts, that looks great. Um, and then four on the inside, and this is with the orientation looking like 
this one two three four yeah those were for the magnet doors or for the magnets for the doors which we did install yeah we're good to go sick all right so let's do these heat inserts next i'll put this printer behind me <clears throat> ah take two seconds here my main printer is still an ender 3v2 and i love uh and i love it as i learned tons from it yeah i the i i owned probably six printers before i got the original ender 3 which i bought at launch and wow it was such a game changer compared to i had the davinci 1.0 the fulgur tech i3 2020 the mono price select mini i3 i had a delta from g tech uh i think that sounds right i had an i3 from bob cnc and i had the anet i think anet was before the ender 3 nearly positive it was um man and yeah when the ender 3 i pre-ordered it because I, I didn't do the cr10 i was like i don't have a space for a printer this big um so i ordered the ender 3 and yeah i was just it was like such a big turning point for me as far as like wow i don't have to you know like if i look at the printer it's not going to unlevel itself it, it just it was such a big um such a big thing and they're still so capable like i i'm i would love to do a ender wire conversion um i, I just would love to do it yeah uh, it'll drive you nuts if you miss any nuts <laughs> yeah this is the third v0 i've built now so like I, I feel pretty confident also now there are those drop-in nuts available um that you can drop in after the fact they're pricey compared to regular nuts but at least if you want to do like a mod later on or you forget something you can always do that uh, I'm not sure if I can still call this under 3v2 though, given all the changes I made to it. Yeah, I've had, we've had that conversation before. At what point is the thing no longer the thing? Like how, how much has to be changed? What's the percentage? Um, I, I definitely have a few printers that are like that as well, where I still call it the original thing, but I'm like, eh, it's got the frame, you know? Mm -mm. All right, so we've got two inserts going into here um yeah so we've got one insert oh this is the wrong camera you don't want to see me Ooh. Ooh, wrong way wrong way again all right so we got one heat insert going into here and we got one heat insert going into there so let's and these are just going down to the surface. Yeah, I, I know that um, the cheapest I've seen them, I think, is from KB3D. But you're in Canada, uh, so I don't know if that's the, the case um, being in Canada. But yeah, there are. I don't know what they're called. Um, but... Um, yeah, let me see. I can show you real quick. Uh, there's a few of them. Like, I know LDO makes a pair, um, but I think KB3D has some generic ones that are less expensive. Uh, let's just type in M3. Uh, okay, so they are LDO. Yeah, LDO roll in. Wait, roll in. Enjoy both pre and post assembly insertion when working with the 1515s. These T nuts are threaded. Yeah, so these are roll, roll in slash slide in. It's my understanding that these can be dropped in. Uh, and that's why they've got their little, like, it's my understanding that these, that's what these do. Ooh, excuse me. Coffee came back. All right. Uh, let's see, one more here. All right, two in there. Let's do all of the, uh, all of these at the same time. So for the front, there's two front legs and one rear leg. Um, let's see. Mm 
Okay, so it looks like it's the it's the center for all of them. Uh, at least that's what it looks like. Center, center, center. Uh, except the rear needs two. Um, the rear one is. This one. Okay, so the rear one has an extra hole. Um, let's see if you can get it. Extra hole right here, you can't really see it, um, but this slot right here, none of the other ones have that. So let's do, let's do that one first. Hi, everyone finally made it. Uh, better late than never. Absolutely. Happy Wednesday, Rob. All right, so this one is going right here. Like that. And then the rest of them should just be on top. So let's go in right in the center. Raheem, thank you. Yeah, we're uh, we're definitely making good progress today. My goal is to get done with AB motors, the front bearing stacks, and um, the Z. That's kind of why I had all these parts prepped out, uh, and I think we're I think we're on track for that, which is awesome because uh, I just kind of trying to figure out pacing here. Um, oh, there's foot accent parts. That's freaking cool. Um, I just want to make sure there's no more self-tapping stuff I need to do. I mean, not self tap Cool. Yeah, I just want to make sure there's no more um, brass heat inserts I need to do. But yeah, I was thinking if we get all this today, then next week we can do the X-axis and the... My goal next week will be X-axis, uh, mini stealth, and belts, and maybe doing some wiring. Okay, so let's go back to where we were, which is here. Okay, so we need feet. Uh, we've got, oh, these are adorable. I forgot how small the uh, the feet for the V0 are, it's so tiny. Hey, what's up, MB? Uh, thanks for the stream. Yeah, absolutely, thanks for stopping by. Bought my V0.2 three days ago, package still on the way, exciting. Did you, what kit did you go with? And also, yeah, what kit did you go with? I just ordered some 40-chain blowers from KV3D. Wasn't aware when I ordered them on Amazon that they had half a CFM. I needed KV3D was cheap so I could find them other than China. Yeah, m most of the time the fans that I buy off of Amazon are not like performance hot end fans. I mostly use them for things like an exhaust fan, a controller fan, like that still needs cooling, but doesn't need to be in like insane, uh, um, as far as like the rotation, CPM, RPM, RPM. I've been, I've had really good luck too with um, the Honey Badger fans. Fabrico's like in-house brand. He sent over some while back and they've been, they've been really nice. Uh, let's see. So it looks like we need M3 by 10s for all of these feet. So let's get M3 10s, M3 10s, M3 10s right here. Get four of these out. I mean, it's especially important if you're trying to push speeds. If you're not really going, like if you're kind of slow and steady, like a lot of this stuff didn't really matter before. Um, when, like when I was building printers, it was just, what's the cheapest thing I can get? Um, but now because we're able to push things so much quicker with better hot ends, better, more rigid machines, um, clipper, input shaping. So like if you're trying to actually get that performance gain, then yeah, you definitely need the cooling that can keep up with it. Otherwise your parts are not gonna look very good. 
So I do remember on the feet, if you over tighten them, they will just fall apart. So let's tighten them tight, but not too tight. <clears throat> uh, I just finished coming AK Sam, belt driven for my ender. Thanks for your movie, man. Yeah, absolutely. Kevin aka Sam mods are awesome. Dude, the dude is super cool. The documentation is fantastic and they're all like really eco-friendly. Like, like not when I say eco, I don't mean like for the environment, uh, but like they're not incredibly expensive. So you get like really good bang for your buck, which is something that I appreciate. It makes, it makes the upgrade more accessible to more people, which is really cool. Because I like some of the fancy mods. Like, I mean, I've got the, um, the beacon that I'm really looking forward to installing at some point, but that's just not a mod that's accessible to everybody at like 70 bucks for a uh, bed probe when, you know, you can get a printer from Micro Center and Ender 3 Pro for a hundred bucks. Like it's just, you know, almost the cost of the printer for a probe. It just, it's not as accessible. Formbot kit, nice. Uh, what color, what colors are you going with for the, for your colors, for the primary and accent? I need to finish his super secret project after forever. I think I know the super secret project. I might not, but he did reach out to me um, a few weeks ago. And I just said, I've got a baby now. Like I can't, I can't test this thing out. I won't be able to do any coverage of it until later on. But maybe I don't know. Maybe I have no idea. Are you running Clipper with the um, Kevin AK Sam upgrade or are you, are you sticking with Marlin? Okay, that's probably plenty tight. And then foot, last foot. Um, buying, oh, I messed up, uh, getting finished. Yeah. I need to finish getting some parts. Micro center, I guess I switched to Ender 3 S1. Huh. That's still a really good, really good deal. <clears throat> uh, buy the Manta Bitrotech M4P, Ment and CP1 for Ender 3 and it's great to have Clipper. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, what am I doing wrong with camp? It looks like it's still meshing the entire bed. Uh, if it's meshing the entire bed, the things I would check are to make sure that the file you sliced is labeled. Um, so you need to have exclude object working. Um, you need to have labels set correctly, label objects in your slicer. And you need to make sure that you've actually got it enabled in your start from macro. Uh, the S1 does have the sprite, yep, yep. Yeah, as far as I know, it was the first, the first of their line that had the sprite was the S1. Okay, bone deep hole, the rear foot has an extra hole, great. All right. So now we are going to attach things. M340s? Wow, I didn't realize that there was. Let's put you back. Let's take our printer, uh, which is right here. Flip it on its head. And it looks like this is the angle. <clears throat> Let's zoom out. Let's go like that. It's not very straight. Very happy to have this big, big lens. Um, okay, so the back foot we established is the one with the extra hole, which is, let's get that one out of the way. This one, all right. For these ones, we are going like this, I take it. That looks right. And like this, I think. Why is this not sitting? It'll probably be okay. Um, yeah, that looks right. And then we need M340s. Let's see if I turn this so you guys can see a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, hell of a deal. I I, I agree. To get that hot in an extruder um, is awesome. All right. Uh, 
I really like the new skirts on the uh, V0.2. Not that I didn't like the skirts on the V0.1 or the uh, O.1, but these sort of like curve and they're dual, like they have the dual tone emblem. They're just really nice. Got a little extra, a little extra pop to them. Right, flip this around. Um, so we want this guy to go in this corner like this. That seems right. Um, it's only one screw that holds this in place. That doesn't seem. Oh, no, that's not right. There's two more. Ah, so that's what these guys are for. Let me line this up really quick. <clears throat> okay, that's good. Okay, those are aligned. So I'm gonna actually bolt, um, I don't know how you guys can see it. I'm going to bolt this down. I think that's a little bit better. I'm gonna bolt this down before I do the big screw. So these are M310 button heads, which are missing from their slot, which means they must be out here somewhere, maybe. Uh, what would I have done with a bag of screws? Is this them? They're gone? No, these must be, these must be them. I think I put them back in the wrong spot. I'll measure them really quick. Uh, M310s. Yep, uh, it was my fault. User error. Uh, right, this is going to go like this. All right, let me get my driver ready I uh, gotta run and see you all at uh, bring some hedgehog prints take photos take all the photos thanks for hanging out man have a safe trip I don't think actually so okay i'm not gonna fully tighten this one down until i tighten down the long screw that holds it in place vertically so let's move this back let's grab one of these m3 by 40s let's drop it in here let's tighten this up okay now that that's tight now we can tilt this back. Uh, for it's not worth it. It is absolutely worth it, man. There is so much cool stuff and cool people. I've been to two. I've been to two Murphs. That's it, and they are, without a doubt, the coolest events I've ever been to in my life. Like, it's it's just so rad. The energy is awesome. Everyone's geeking out. There's so many cool projects. Like it, it's just so rad. Okay, so one last foot to go on. It's going on like. Wait, actually, I don't know. Does this one only have one attachment point? It looks like it does. So this one hangs off the end.
Uh, it was good hanging out with you. I mean, yeah, it was so it was so cool to meet you in person, man. It's just fun, like I don't know, putting faces to the names and like we're all like every, everybody loves 3D printing. That's like in 3D printing, everyone feels so like passionate about it. And yeah, sometimes that leads to drama, but man, it's also a very beautiful thing when everyone comes together and. It's just, I don't know, it's so freaking cool. The energy's awesome, like, I, it's very red. All right, those are good. So now we're gonna put on our accent pieces, which is cool. That's something that I didn't even know we were, we were gonna be having. Um, so that wasn't a thing before. Let's see. Where are the accent pieces? Those are extruder pieces. Must be on a separate, must be on a separate layer. <laughs> where, where are you? Where are you? Uh, maybe in here? Yep. Cool. Oh, sweet. The cam locks are printed. That's rad. So that I didn't realize. That's why I wasn't finding them earlier. I was looking for metal pieces. Okay, so um, does it matter? Are these all the same? They sure look like they're all the same. Nope, they're not all the same. You go there. Uh, just sucks I had to cancel my short term this year. Yeah, I, I mean, at least there will be more, right? I, I can't go to any this year, but I will definitely be back. All right, M2 by 10. So these are self-tapping screws. And I think we're gonna need the small driver. Oh, oh. good luck finding that screw. Um, all right, give me 30 seconds. Oop, hit my butt. Ugh. All right, where did you go? I actually found it. Um, yeah, I'm, lo I'm missing one of my drivers and it's the small one, the two, no, 1.5. So we've got 2.5, you can't have gone far. I think I've got a backup, uh, let's see. This is 1.27, so that's too small. This is 1.5, perfect. Uh, what do you bring your cooling fans and bed at printing polymaker ASA? Uh, so for, I guess it depends, but generally speaking, I'm printing ABS at hundred Celsius on the bed, uh, 250 ish on the hot end. Um, and cooling fan is off. It depends on the printer. So it, it depends on the printer and it depends on the, um, the model. So like, on a printer that's printing quick, I have the fan on and I usually start at about 20% uh, 20 fan speed after the first three layers, roughly. Um, but it depends because like before, before we had printers that were printing as quick as we are now, I didn't print ABS with a fan on. I, I just, I couldn't, it was too problematic. Um, so it really depends on your printer. Yeah, if you've got, you know, if you've got a printer that's like clippered running fast or trying to print quick, then you're gonna need some cooling. Uh, you're definitely gonna need some cooling or your overhangs are gonna look terrible. So it just depends. Also, every printer is different. Every hot end is different. And again, if your parts don't really have overhangs, then you can do, you can get away with less cooling. It's really the overhangs that suffer. Okay, that's plenty. What I would probably recommend doing is with your filament, find some kind of an overhang test 
It doesn't have to be like an extreme overhang test, but I don't know. Find some kind of overhang test. Uh, I've never printed ABS without a fan. Yeah, Turtle says never printed without a fan. I printed ABS without a fan for at least the four, first four or five years of 3D printing. The first printer I got was the DaVinci 1.0 and all they had, it was, it was like a lockdown ecosystem. All that they had was ABS for it. Uh, and I definitely did not use any fans. But yeah, I would say start off with some kind of like an overhang test and try different fan speeds. I don't know, I would imagine, I don't think there's any built in, um, I don't know that there's any built in fan calibrations, but you could very likely find some kind of an overhang and then go into the G code and modify your fan speeds. That way you can start like, I don't know, every five millimeters of it. So let's say you have something that's just like a 45 degree overhang and every five millimeters of it or every set number of lines, you change the fan speed from like 10%, maybe like in 5% increments to see at what point, like where does it look the best? That could be a good way to figure it out. Uh, you're closer to the border, you're closer to border of Ohio. I don't think that's for me. Uh, on my V0.1 stock profile in Kira, Teal, Teal, okay, so using a ASA Dragon standard flow, I'm trying to start printing the V0.2 top hat. Is it, are they big parts? I, um, well, actually, I guess they must be kind of big parts because I think I have them over there. But yeah, before you full send, um, so I guess these are probably the top hat parts maybe? Or I mean, these are skirts. Um, I don't actually know what the top hat parts look like for the V0.2 because I haven't built one yet. This is the first. But yeah, I would think that um, doing some kind of an overhang test and doing, oh shit. Um, variations of span, uh, span speed. Fan speed will at least get you close to where you want to be at. Nope, what are we doing? Maybe it was fine how it was. Uh, no, just the corner clips. Off the 100 millimeter top hat. I don't think the corner clips have any overhangs. Honestly, I would start, I would, st I would print one with no, uh, if they're flat pieces, no overhangs, I would print one without any airflow or like any layer cooling fan and then print another one with like 10 or 20% because they're small if they're just the panel parts and decide which one looks the best and go based off that. Do you have a, what's your default turtle? Cause you said you've never printed ABS without a uh, layer cooling fan. What do you, what do you normally default to on the fan? Okay, last one of these self-tapping screws. I'm not, I'm sorry, last of these self-tapping corner pieces. Two more screws. Aaron says, can I get you anything? Uh, Depends if we're eating something soon. Uh, if we're not eating something soon, actually, no, 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 no. I was gonna say maybe a cliff bar, but if you haven't eaten the leftover spaghetti from last night's dinner, I'll have that um, when I'm done streaming here. We're getting close. I I'm gonna get the Z axis put on, which is probably, if I had to guess, another like 15 to 20 minutes, maybe. So thank you though. So I've got water and uh, yeah, I think I'll have the spaghetti if you haven't eaten it. Uh, depends on the printer, but 15 to 30%. Okay. Some fans will not spin under 25%, gotcha. You already gave him a child. I think he's good. <laughs> still get, still get hungry, Lisa. <laughs> Even more hungry now. Jackson's always eating. These little accent parts are nice. The self-tapping screws are kind of a pain because this, this driver does such a small handle that it just hurts your hand, but they look really nice. It's the small little Small little details. Okay, we've got that. Now it's time, apply lubrication, prevent rust. Are these pre-lubed? I don't know that it is. 
I'm used to using the prelude ones. Uh, I think we use the synthetic grease. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is what we've been using for the lead screws. I think we honestly use this for a lot of what we're using, but I'll put a little bit of this on the rail. And then, is this not? Yeah, we'll just thread this. Uh, speed benches uh, and ABS get 100. Yeah, 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 totally. But that's not <laughs> that's not the standard. Oh, this is not as thick as I thought it was gonna be. What? I wonder if this is expired. Interesting. I thought this stuff was, I thought this was thicker consistency. Ugh, should've put gloves on. <clears throat> I'm just gonna thread this, thread this up and down once to spread it around. It's all gonna catch on the nut anyway. does not matter use whatever makes the most sense for your electronics layout okay so let's see how is this mounting this is going to be mounting I imagine like this and if that's the case Uh, how is this? What am I doing wrong? Okay, this goes at an angle, that's why. Okay, so it says whatever makes the most sense for your electronics. Um, what am I doing? Let's see. Okay, so like this. I think that makes the most sense. fine <clears throat> uh, there we go okay so we are going to be attaching this is the motor mount so it's got three screws that go into the motor then two that go into our um Two that go into the preloaded nuts. We need two M38s, two M36s. Uh, M36, M38s. Two of these guys. And an M36. Uh, I met Steve, Joel, Chris Riley, and others at Earth. Cool stuff to see also. Yeah, I've never gone to Earth. I've been to Murph twice. I'd like to go to Earth. Earth is definitely up there on my list. I've heard it's, it looks it looks much more organized. Not that I don't mind the chaos, because Earth or, or Murph was like just a big party. Like everyone stays at the same hotel, and then afterwards, usually like it's like late nights just drinking beer and talking 3D printers in the in the lobby of this hotel. Um there's a ton of fun, <clears throat> but the layout of, of Earth looks pretty cool. Okay, so the shorter screw goes into the back because it's got sort of a inset or inlay for the screw head while the other two don't. So these are the M3, M3 by eight, M3 by eight. Ah. 
Come on. I want these tight, but I'm also really trying not to crack these parts. It's probably good. All right, yeah, I think that's good. Uh, racing coffee tables in the hotel. Yes, yes, Mitch, uh, Mitch 3D, who has the backpack Delta printer, uh, <laughs> climbs inside of the coffee table and races around the lobby. Joel, Joel, I think Joel's usually the one that pushes him. <clears throat> okay, C axis lead screw. All right, all right, so we are attaching see the next step before fully tightening okay so at this point we need to we need like a third third hand basically because we need this needs to go through here uh, so kind of like this start threading this onto the bed but what we need to do is have the anti-backlash spring. Um, I think that doing it sideways might be the easiest way to do this. If I can support the motor and not bend the lead screw. So let's, let's try this. Shove some foam underneath it. Like that. Okay, so we need spring on here. I actually want to completely back this out. So basically, we want the spring to keep comp uh, like to compress between the part that we mounted and this little plastic piece. Um, the teeth of it need to be interlocked with each other, so that way it works the way it's supposed to. So what we need to do is press press this piece in. Um, I need to see what direction the uh, easier to do this not on camera. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Okay, so front and back is the teeth. So it's easier to have one hand, a third hand. Okay, I'm gonna try my best. I don't know how much, I don't, I might not be able to end up getting this on camera. We'll see, I'm gonna try my best. Oh yeah, Prima did race in it. That was a fun, such a crazy time. Okay, so I've got it compressed. I'm basically holding the bed and this in place with my thumb. And on my other hand, I'm getting the lead screw and I am attempting to twist it through. and I failed. So we'll try it again. Definitely not my favorite part, but it, it only has to be done once. Why does it keep popping out? I must just not have it compressed enough. <clears throat> Right again. I don't remember it being such a pain in the past. Um, how's the color of the printed parts from your kit? I've had zero warping so far. I've had none, zero. So yeah, we've looked at pretty much every single part and there has been no warping. And we've had some pretty big, um, some pretty big parts as well. I think that I'm just going at an angle. And that's what's screwing this up.
Okay, I did it. Yes. All right. Woo! It didn't help that the um, I had greased this lead screw, so my hands are slippery. Basically, this that so it's hard, so hard to explain. Um, let me see if I go back up here. So there's uh, this kind of this picture shows it pretty well. So there's two parts to the this backlash nut, and I just want to explain it for anyone that hasn't built this before. So here we go. There's two parts to it. You have the part that you bolt onto the actual printed part, then you have a spring in between the two, and then you have this other part that's pretty floating, but it ha they both have teeth. So one has like like there's. Out, sticking out and not sticking out. There's the teeth interlock with each other. So when you pass the lead screw through, you need to, with your hand, compress the spring so that way these two pieces, the teeth, align or lock in with each other. Once you push that lead screw through, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about it anymore. It'll, it'll stay locked in, but you need that so that way they don't allow the lead screw to wobble. It's the anti-backlash. So. Uh, uh, I watched on the YouTube account and they received most of the black parts. Yeah, I'm sure you're talking about Mandic's, uh, Mandic Reilly's video that he just put out today. Uh, it had me concerned, but so far we've had no warping. Um, and we've had some pretty big parts like the AB motors today. Uh, those are fairly large parts. And, um, we also had the big, this inlet, uh, one second, let me zoom out for a second. This big, oh man, I don't want to get grease all over the camera. Um, this piece right here is pretty large and there was none on it the only thing i've noticed with some of um some of the parts is that the top layer on some of the black parts has some under extrusion um but i the parts seem strong so we'll see i mean again if anything if anything breaks during the build i will certainly call it out during the build as well as after um and then after I've got some print time with it, I'll, we'll see how it all holds up. But yeah, for right now, I haven't had any issues at all. I've been very impressed with the parts, considering that they're basically thrown in as a freebie with this kit, which isn't something that, as far as I know, any other kits have. Okay, so motor is in. Uh, I need to attach the screws, but we're, it says to not fully tighten them because we want to make sure that the bed is able to move up and down. We don't want the lead screw at an angle because it'll, it won't be able to move. Um, it won't be able to move. It'll lock up. So let's, let's go here. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if Mandix was just like a unlucky. Uh, what, what? Was it a spool though? I don't know. This is the I just joined. Oh, no worries. You know, you're, you're totally fine. We've been streaming for four, four. No, I don't have a watch on three hours. So yeah, it's only, I don't mind. I don't mind repeat answering questions. No other kits have printed parts. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say, I don't think so. The fact that they're including them, um, is impressive in itself at without any additional cost. And so far, yeah, the quality's been quality's been fine. I don't know that if I printed them, they would really be looking much better. The top layer under extrusion, I'm curious about how what that's what that blah, 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 can't even talk anymore. What that's going to mean. Um, but if it's just the top layers, then it, we might be fine. So we'll see. But yeah, as far as what Mandic was showing, which was like layers splintering from each other, and he had one part you showed that was super warped. I haven't seen anything like that on my end. I mean, we're not done yet, so, you know, we'll see, but we, we are making good progress on the functional side of things. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Um, have you seen the Rook? Um, yes. Yep, yep. I have seen the Rook um, MK1. Oh, crap. Are you, we going to be able to... Yeah, we can still get this in. Yeah, I, I would love to build a Rook at some point. Um, after this, we're building a 2.4, and then we're going back to the ERCF, um, but the Rook looks cool. I mean, for a, um, did I tighten this too much? Is that why we're not moving? For a mostly printed 
you know, relatively budget 3D printer, it seems it seems really cool. I'm definitely not against uh, building one just to see what they're all about. I know there's like three variants too though. There's like the MK1, the 2020, 2020, and then there's the Rook Evolution. So um, let's see. So, but yeah, one, I'd like to build at least like a Rook. I think it'd be fun. Uh, all right, so we did this, keep them loose, proceed to the next step. So now this wants us to manually cycle the bed up and down to ensure proper alignment and then tighten them. Uh, so we'll leave this upside down. Let me make sure these are nice and loose. I think they're both plenty loose, but that one probably. Okay, so our motor can wiggle back and forth, which is what we want. And now we're just going to turn the screw manually, get grease all over our hands. Uh, he just unfortunately received a Friday run of parts. Are oh, you talking about um, Mandic? Yeah, it sucks. I mean, again, some of the parts he showed off looked bad. And I know he had, I saw splintering on the front of one of his um, bearing stacks and none of mine have that. He had a splint it looked like on the front of his bed. Mine doesn't have that. I, so I, again, unless they're gonna develop, um, but I don't think he's had his kit built for very long. Like I would be surprised if he's had his kit, kit built for more than like a week or a week and a half. So um, if it's going to happen, it should happen soon, like relatively soon after the build. But I, it seems to me like those were all things that happened during the build or, you know, were like that during the build. So I don't know, we'll see. There's the 180. Yeah, there's a lot of rooks. I, I, almost, I almost also think there's too many rooks. Um, I think that part of it is that he just enjoys, he because even before rook, he was building quite a few printers. But for the sake of like other people being able to build them and for kits to be able to come out, it's tough when there's so many variants of of the printer. Um, so I would like for them to be like maybe two Rook versions max. And those are kind of, you know, kind of like Voron. Like there's, there's four, one, two, three, four, five main ones, I suppose. Four real main, I mean, not, not a ton of people I know build the legacy over the other ones, but it just, it's tough when it's so new and there's so many variants of it. Okay, I think we're good. I'm going to bring it all the way and then I'm gonna tighten this. Once I tighten it, we'll bring it up or down one more, one or two more times to make sure there's um, no spots where it's kind of binding. It's looking good though. We made some really good progress today. I wasn't sure if I was being over opti overly optimistic when I put together the things I'd like to get done today, but we did it in pretty good timing too, I, I feel. Uh, Rook is the printer model from far up north. <laughs> what? Uh, nice, I only have bed slingers right now and have been contemplating ordering one of the Rook kits, gotcha. Yeah, I think it looks like a fun Core XY printer and I mean, they seem quite capable. Um, I think like if you gave me the option to choose between a V0 and the Rook, I would choose a V0 just because I think it's a bit more of a developed ecosystem, but they're also pricier. I mean, even if you go with this one, which is the most budget one I've seen, you're looking at 470 ish dollars. Um, well, I think the Rook is what, 299. So it's hard to argue with the price for like a starter core XY or just a fun project. Oh, Rolohan is from Canada. Gotcha. I like the idea of the Rook, but feel like he could spend a little more time making the parts look pretty and redefined versus making you design every three weeks. I 100% feel the same way. Again, I know that before the Rook, he was building a lot of different printers. And so I think that that's like, he enjoys building printer designs. And I totally get that because my personality is very much so, you know, like, oh, the next thing, next thing. And he has spent a lot of time on these printers. Don't get me wrong, but it does feel like he cranks them out pretty quick. And I, I would also like to see a bit more like refinement on a few of the ones that are out there. Uh, I'm a little behind going to get back to, uh, to it after the stream. So that's good. Only part of the V02 that gave me grief was the strain relief. Four attempts before I got it to look good. The strain relief. You mean on the like tool head wires? Okay, I think we're good. I, I don't know why I'm going back and forth a million times, but I, it's because I'm just, I want it tight, but not too tight. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can still freely. That feels good to me. Let's 
move it all the way, we'll go all the way to the top and then all the way back down. Still feels good. Wait, why is it stopping? Did we hit something? Oh, <laughs> we hit the rail stops, yes. <laughs> like, why are we stopping? Because that's as far as your little baby linear rails go. That threw me off for a second. I thought we had more room to go, but. Uh, just wait, you're going to have a Core XY conversion for the Ender 3 really soon. Why do I feel like I saw someone that shared something about a Core XY Ender 3 printer? Why is this in my head? <sighs> what is it, Edge of 3D? I feel like I saw something recently. It feels like a dream, like I only have a vague memory of it. I'll wait until whatever it is is like public, I guess, but I feel like I saw something somewhere. All right, alignment's good. Oh, yeah, buddy, we're on the x-axis. All right, so we kicked some serious ass today. I think we kicked ass. I, I think that I kept the squirrel to a minimum. The squirrel was at bay. Um, yeah, there's like, yes. this looks awesome. Okay. Uh, so let's see what's like what's left. So we got x-axis, which we're absolutely gonna do next week. I'll get all that stuff out and prepared. Cool, cool. Okay, so tr uh, racking the gantry, top beams. Cool, cool. AV belts. So we'll definitely do that next week. Print bed. It should only be a couple steps. All right, my dream next week is that we get all the way. I'd love to get through the print head next week. So x-axis, belts, bed, and tool head. If we can do that, the following week is just wiring things up and, and panels. So yeah, that's gonna be my goal. That is going to be my goal, but I think we did an awesome job today. Z-axis is on, we've got the feet on, we've got AV motors mounted, we've got the front bearing stacks on. We definitely, it's it's looking like, it, we started today with just an aluminum square and now it's starting to really look like a printer's coming together. Um, I'll DM you a picture, just, okay, sounds great. Uh, it's kind of public if you look in the right places. Yeah, I think that maybe one of the discords I'm part of, I late, like when I can't sleep late at night, I, I do everything from like, watch YouTube videos, go through Discord, go through Twitter, go through the internet. Like, so I might've stumbled across something in late night, which is why I have a memory of seeing an Ender 3 Core XY, but not, not coming to light. Um, plug it in and print a bench. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also one thing about Japan. Put the Kirigami bed on this afternoon, have to preload some M3s and finish the frame. Nice, great job, Dennis. Um, ERCF is a big, right now so i um where the hell to put it actually is it in the closet is it in is it in a drawer i don't know where the ercf is right this i think it's in a box actually no no it's in a box that's uh here it is yeah so ercf um we like took some steps forward took some serious steps back oops hitting cameras um, I am going to reprint everything. All these parts I am not keeping. Um, so I was having some issues with this green ABS 1.5 from Fusion 3D. Um, and I love it. And I was kind of getting it dialed in for the ERCF. Uh, and I had done some filing to, uh, for the parts that Scott had mentioned that I should file the little latches. Um, but then I discovered that the filament's no longer manufactured. Um, I originally got it from Fabrico and then Fabrico ran out and I bought a spool or two from Fusion directly and they don't have it there either. And I haven't seen it anywhere else. And so I've got about two thirds of a kilogram left, maybe, maybe. Uh, and it's the accent parts for my switch wire and I love the way it looks on the switch wire. So I'm keeping the rest of that spool for exclusively emergency switch wire upgrades and parts. Um, and I'm going to be reprinting all the parts in Polymaker. I'm thinking pop pink. And so it's probably going to be black on pink or another color on pink, but probably black on pink, I think. Um, so I'm going to be reprinting all of them. 
That being said, I'm going to probably off stream, get us caught up to where we were on stream, which will be all of the, um, all of the magnets into the gates and the gate latches. I will do all of that myself. So that way when we continue, it'll just be like, Hey, we're back on part three or whatever we were on part two. I think, I think we part one never happened because we had issues. Um, but we'll continue and we'll be where we left off, but they'll just be different printed parts. So, um, it'll be a little bit because, um, as far as I know, Fabrico got in the 2.4 that I'm going to be building. And I think they wanted to send printed parts with it. So right after this, oh, this died. Um, right after this build, the V0, um, we will be starting the 2.4. So it'll be a little bit. I feel like I learned a lot though. One second. I think I need to change my Bluetooth settings to connect. There we go. Uh, I feel like I learned a lot in the mistakes that were made. Um, part of it I do think was my fault. I think that my settings weren't correct and I thought that I printed the calibration piece, but maybe I didn't print the calibration piece and that's why things are more difficult. And then um, Scott had mentioned filing some of the, the parts that the latches go into and I think that's a really great idea. I didn't have proper files so I used sandpaper which was a pain but I bought a file set. So yeah, I, we'll, when we get back into the ERCF, yeah, it should be back. When it dies for me, it, oops. Forgot double tapping. When it dies for me, it dies for the stream um, because it, the way the audio source is grabbed. So uh, yeah, I ordered an extra spool of my Warren's ABS. I pretty much always do that. Um, for any of the V0s I've built, I have a spool of them somewhere. Um, however, on one of the, one of the V0s was carbon fiber ABS. And unless I get it from, ah, no, I still might keep that. I might just go with it. Carbon fiber ABS does mostly look the same because the carbon fibers uh, make it look very similar, the black carbon fiber, so. Ah, yes, then I'm only missing the trident, exactly. Which maybe I'll build one for Steve at one point, we'll see. Anyways, on that note, I am going to call it at the three hour mark, which is really good. I thought it would take us longer to get through um, this much. So thank you everybody as always for hanging out, for the conversation, the questions, the feedback, the pointing me in the right direction. Um, for anybody that is traveling, I know Scott's traveling. I know quite a few people have already taken off. Um, uh, have safe travel at, uh, I can't think of what this one's called, Rocky Mountain, the Rep Rep Festival. Please take photos, please post photos. I, I'm seriously considering adding a channel to the Discord for Rep Rep Fests or festivals or something like that where people can post photos, like a good photo dump slash chatting about the festivals. I think that could be cool, especially with how many there are now. Um, maybe we'll do a vote on that or something, but we'll continue this next week. Um, we have two printers and boxes that need to get unboxed. One's the Anchor Make M5 and one is the, um, it's from Flying Bear, it's their Quirks Y printer, and we have a K1 coming. So we might we might do a stream this upcoming Monday. Uh, I won't probably know until Sunday or so how things are going, but if we do, I'll post that. And if not, we will see everybody, see everybody next Wednesday. So yeah, thank you again, everybody, for all of the support, all of the memberships, all of the, just everything. <laughs> have a wonderful night. Nice, uh, I will be looking for updates on your 2.4 and, uh, yeah, I'll talk to everyone later. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Bye.